Good afternoon, everyone. If we could, let's turn our attention to item number one on the unapproved agenda, which is an invocation. Let's just take a moment of silence and reflection and just a moment, please. Thank you very much. And uh, for those of you that may never, maybe you never have attended our town meeting, to my left, in that corner, there's a table back there that has paperwork in regards to what we're going to be addressing tonight, copy of the agenda, and maybe other some, uh, supporting documents. You're welcome to look back there and see what you uh, might find interesting and be able to follow along with the meeting. Uh, we're officially calling this meeting to order and welcoming all of you. And uh, let's turn our attention to the flag to my right and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay, number four, consideration of agenda. The first thing I'd like to announce is that, unfortunately, Mr. Brown and Mr. Murdoch both are ill and in the bed, uh, so our prayers are with them. They will be on the phone uh, as long as they can take it. Briefly. <laughs> Briefly, so that we can fulfill the obligations that we're under deadline at year's end for, in regards to the budget and some other items uh, so uh, for the record that the two commissioners mr brown and mr murdoch will be present by phone which no just mr brown just, just, just mr brown uh, no just mr murdoch, murdoch. Commissioner murdoch actually. well how about mr brown he's not going to be on the phone so we've got, a little, got a little change there so we've got mr murdoch on the phone mr brown <coughs> is in the bed and will not be on the phone but so officially we will have four commissioners present of the five and uh i mean y'all driving me crazy <laughs> all right four right all right we've been five four three back to four all right four present for voting purposes and the vote will be taken tonight my name call so that we can keep the record correct otherwise if everybody was here or four people were here we could do it by hands or voice but because we have some remotely present we have to do by name so we will be recording that way is that correct madam clerk yes sir okay now number four agenda approval as presented are there any amendments Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, amend the uh, agenda to move item 10, uh, the light ordinance, and item 17, uh, some of the paid parking changes. We want to move that up on the agenda, uh, so because that's going to take up uh, Brian's assistance, and we want to move that up so he can, if he has to get off the phone, he can. Where were you proposing to move it? I was going to uh, move it after we have uh, public comments. So it'll be number 10 will be number 7, and number 17 will be number 8. Why can't we do 6A and 6B? 6A, 6B sounds great. Right. 6A, 6B. Okay, after public comments. Correct. All right. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. Is your motion to amend and otherwise approved as amended? That's your motion. You I'd like to make a motion to approve yeah. it as amended. All right. All in favor, say aye. Go back and do it. Name. The my item on fourteen will go out. We'll take care of that one. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Murdoch, your vote is yes. All right, Miss Pat. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Doctor? Yes. 
All right, it's unanimous for vote in favor of the amended agenda. All right, are we ready to move to number five, the consideration of approving the minutes, all four sets? If so, is there a motion? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I'd like a motion to approve the minutes of April, 4, uh, April 21st, meeting April 25th, the meeting on May 17th, and special meeting on May 20th. Uh, we have a motion to approve all four sets of minutes. Is there a second? Second. All right. May I make one, one correction? On page 21, um, one, two, third, third full paragraph. Which, which, which set of minutes are you on? I'm on, I'm on page 21 in the 21 packet. 21 on the back. Yeah, in the okay. packet, yeah. Uh, third full paragraph down, uh, third from the last uh, line. Um, moral should be morale. Okay. I, I just think it's important because <laughs> we're talking about a, not a moral issue here. It's just a typo. Okay. All right. Any other corrections or amendments proposed? Everybody understand the correction? That was for the meeting on May, May 20th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. All right, Mr. Murdoch, are you in favor? Aye. Ms. Pat? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Doctor? Aye. All right, the motion passes to approve the minutes as presented with the changes noted. Number six public comments and we do have several people that have signed up for this for those of you that are going to speak if you will come to the podium when you're recognized give us your name and your address and uh, Pat Cusack hello sir Is this where I go? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm Pat Cusack. I'm the uh, project coordinator uh, permit holder for Holden Beach for our Turtle Patrol. And I'm here to speak in favor of the lighting ordinance that's been proposed. Um, we average anywhere from three to 500 hatchlings a year that we lose into the dunes due to lights from houses. Um, and that has happened just about every year. Uh, it only takes a couple of nests for that to happen. Uh, we've uh, talked to vacationers uh, at nests where this has happened, and they said, uh, why are you guys out here? And they say, uh, we tell them that the lights were on, the hatchlings followed the lights, they are attracted to white light, and they end up in the dunes. The, Ghost crabs, get them, foxes, uh, they dehydrate and die. Uh, and uh, the vacationer said, well, that's my house with the lights on. I didn't even know they were on. So we need to do something. I you know, hope this ordinance starts the process of uh, uh, eliminating that. Uh, I've followed tracks of hatchlings over 200 yards uh, down the beach parallel to the water and they end up going up towards a, a house that obviously had lights on during the light night so uh, uh, we uh, we recommend uh, red lights on the beach uh, households uh, there's there's a lot of tur turtle safe lights now out uh, in amber colored uh, with uh, uh, downcast lights they're shielded uh, and I'd be happy to help anybody uh, who has questions about this uh, to talk about it uh, but all oceanfront lighting should be shielded uh, just no no if I butts or hands about that one and uh, uh, last Tuesday uh, we had a female uh, come up on the beach nesting and it we followed her for over 175 yards after she nested because she was attracted to the lights at Ocean High. So any white light anywhere along the beach will attract these turtles, even adult turtles. So uh, 
I hope you guys vote in favor of this <laughs> and uh, help our uh, hatchlings. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, sir. John, we have you with the turtle people as well. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is John Cefeli. I'm the president of the uh, Holden Beach Turtle Patrol. Um, and I'm not going to reiterate what Pat just said, but it is important um, for our group to save the turtles, uh, whether it's the mama coming up and it gets uh, distracted and goes a hundred and something yards down the beach because they can't find the water because of the light distracting them, or the babies that go into the dunes during the night and when we go out there in the morning, we're trying to see where they went, and we'll find a lot of them that never made it to the water. So we, we would like, we hope that you pass this ordinance um, to make it safer for the turtles. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. And I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody in the room and those that are listening. We all appreciate all the hard work that you, you and your group do. Ashley Royal, you're next, sir. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, thank you for letting me comment on one of the agenda items. I'd like to speak to uh, agenda item number 14, um, and I'll preface my comments by saying that I'm a strong supporter of private business and all the rights and privileges of conducting a business. However, I would encourage the board to not take action on this agenda item to allow what would be the first vendor to be on our beach selling a product. I believe that once we open that door, that uh, it's going to be difficult for others who come to the before you with asking for the similar privilege. This is, as you know, this has come to the board many times, and when I was on the board. Uh, that was my opinion, and, and my opinion hasn't changed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Jeff? Hi, my name is Jeff Trombley. I live at 137 Scotch Bonnet Drive, and I want to talk about the uh, light over. Uh, it's nice that we're doing these things on the ocean front, but I think we need to take into consideration the canal things as well. Since we've moved down here, we moved down here for the, you know, the, the tranquility, the peace, you know, the unobtrusive lights that uh, do come from floodlights. They are terrible. Uh, we can't even sit on our back porch through the summer. We have mostly renters or transient residents that are across the canal. From us. There's nothing wrong with that, but the residents who live there know that those lights are obtrusive, so they don't turn them on unless they're using them for a purpose. That's the thing that I'm concerned about is the non-purpose. Just recently, we had them on for over five weeks. So they left didn't come back. Then our kids show up, they turn them off. Two weeks later, more kids come down, and they turned them on and left them on until after midnight. I went outside and found them said something, because I had to work in the morning. I had to work six days a week. I need to get up early. They're coming right in our bedroom window across the canal. So whether they're pointed down or not, reflecting off the canal, back up, it, it's an issue. And it's a serious issue. We can't enjoy our backyard, which we've really come to, you know, really enjoy, except for the winter months. Summer, we pretty much just have to sit out front. And that's the way it's going to be. And that's not the way it should be. These lights need to be on timers or, dis or discontinued, like they said, permanently. They need to be removed and gone. There's no reason to have them. Uh, I don't have a problem with porch lights, things like that, you know, or a light down by the dock. It's a uh, you know, light that's not too bright. But there's no excuse for flood lights. I use blue lights to keep it where it's calm and nobody, nobody's, you know, when it comes up and down the steps are perfectly fine. It works out great. You don't need to have those lights shining out. Of the and pointing them down, like the current ordinance said, I did call in to find out what the ordinance is. Just they have to point them down, but that's not acceptable. These need to be removed and replaced with something that's a little less of Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Marty Aaronwood. <clears throat> Hi, Marty Aaronwood. I'm 114 Shrimp Street. I'm here today to speak in favor of Sunsuch Slush's request to operate push carts on the Strand. As a longtime business operating on Holden Beach over 10 years, they have been actively participating in all our community events, 
to add carts on the strand provides a choice to visitors without having to leave the beach. A cold treat on a hot day would be a plus. Having many friends who live on both Ocean Isle Beach and Oak Island where they have operated for over 20 years, when asked about their impressions, they have had nothing but positive comments about their carts on those beaches. The workers, they say, are good stewards of the beach. Beyond providing a service, they clean up the areas where they operate, and they also offer another set of eyes on the strand if something were to go wrong. Since the workers are on the beach daily, they will be good ambassadors for our island when they interact with our visitors. Finally, since Sunset Slush has a shop already on the island and is a tax-paying member of the island, I think this is just an extension of their service. They are already providing here for us. I sincerely hope that the commissioners will support our local business owners and grant their request. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, James Bauer. <clears throat> James Bauer, 329 Ocean Boulevard West. Uh, I'd just like to say, um, after, re after uh, attending the last uh, meeting for the Hoagland Beach Property Owners Association, uh, thank you for bringing us to the almost the verge of bankruptcy. Um, it doesn't look like there's any available funds left to do anything if there is any emergency that we have to deal with. So thank you for that. Uh, as far as the slush, uh, as far as the uh, slushy concession, I I agree. It's a door that we don't need to open. The the beach is fine. There's no public mandate for it. There are concerns about litter and concerns about opening the door, where does it stop? Is it going to stop with a bar? Is it going to stop start with uh, selling alcohol on the beach? I don't think it's a good idea. Um, the the l second to last thing is uh, I've been coming here now for a couple of years. We're still doing the same audio only with just a, uh, a an iPad, and we can. it's barely uh, possible to hear you when you speak with your microphones here. I can't imagine what it's like off-site. And the last thing is, is the one thing that's not on the, that's not on any, uh, any of the schedule today is the pier. What's going on with the pier? Have we ever gotten any insurance information about the pier? What is the pier going to cost? What is the pier, what's going on with the pier? What's going on? I think everybody here, especially the people that fought so hard against it, and we were the majority, would like to know. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that concludes the list of speakers that I have. Is that correct? Yes, and then there was one that submitted online, so that comment posted online, and I can email it to you guys and provided you with a copy. So it's, on, it's available for people to look at online if they'd like to see it. Okay. And Madam Clerk, is the video working tonight? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so video with the audio is actually working. Yep. No, sir. You can't see the people that are you can. Right. It's online today. It's online right now. All right. Let's move forward, please. Number <coughs> six A. And uh, Mr. Smith, you have the floor. Yes, sir. I just uh, the the first thing I uh, I'd like to say, and I was going to maybe do this in uh, closing comments, but we're all just we should all be thankful that we've got such a, a beautiful place to live. And, and with that being said, uh, the, the, the night sky is, is one of the most beautiful parts of this island. So the, the, the purpose of this changing this law or amending this light ordinance is to reduce the light pollution on Holden Beach, uh, to control the nighttime character of our beach, uh, protect neighboring properties from a nuisance glare and light trespassing, I guess you would call it. Uh, and the brightening of the night sky uh, due to man-made lighting is to protect and not disrupt, uh, disrupt the, the nesting sea turtle habitats that we have here at Holden Beach. Uh, it's uh, something that we have worked on with both, uh, uh, both members of the public, fellow members of the uh, Board of Commissioners. We've worked really hard to try to make this where that we can have our uh, have some type of I guess some some way that we can I hate to use the word police but we can we now have something that when there is an issue we've got a a, a ordinance now that can can back it up so when the turtle patrol guys uh, have issue with lights 
uh, they can uh, make a call and uh, if there's a, a problem with somebody not wanting to turn them off. And now we have something that uh, will help help with that. So with that, I would uh, like to. Uh, Okay, we made a slight adjustment, and it wasn't in the wording. It was just in whether it was a uh, just the number, the G. Yeah, a G instead of a number two item. I had it was kind of like a typo, but that has been done in, in my pass out here. But uh, I would like to uh, ask my fellow commissioners for someone to make a motion to approve uh, the the adjustments to the, the lighting ordinance. And, and, and make everyone aware this isn't something that's going to be enforced starting today. There is there's properties, uh, even such as my own, that uh, uh, that need to get into compliance. Uh, those uh, will be given a pretty much a six months grace period until the end of the year to make uh, sure that the, the homeowner property owners can make adjustments to their outdoor lighting to to meet the uh, to meet the ordinance requirements. I would like to ask for one of my fellow commissioners to make a motion to approve the ordinances correctly. Okay. I'd like to make a suggestion that whoever proposes to make this motion put an effective date in the motion. Which day do you want one? The six months grace period and the He suggested six months. Written right here. Where? Where are you looking? First day of July 22. With the grace period of six months. And what I'm suggesting is to identify mm -hmm. that date. That way there's no. January? Yeah. January. January 1st, 2023. January 1, 2023. That way there's no no argument. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. So we're back to... Uh, did I get a motion? Can, can I get a motion? Yes. What did that change? I'll make a, a motion to accept the ordinance 2021-13. With changes. With the changes listed to be effective January 1st, 2023. Second. Right. Okay, second. I right, have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Do, given the comment about floodlights, floodlights, oh, given the comment about floodlights, is there anything that needs to be addressed in here where floodlights are still? I think that's in, is that in 9232A? 9232B, flood or spotlights provided they are directed onto the owner's property. I heard one comment about, you know, whether we should allow floodlights or not, whether they're directed or not. I, mm -hmm. This is the time to discuss it. Not that we can't alter again, but. Mm -hmm. Now, the, you know, there are some residents that would, there are some residents that, that need uh, that type of direct light uh, to shine down. Uh, you know, they don't have any nuances and, you know, where they're not going to be a nuisance to their neighbors. And again, this would be up to, uh, you know, again, if a, a complaint is filed, uh, there would be a way for the, uh, that there would be a way for, for the inspector to go in and, and look at it and make sure that, uh, it is not being a nuisance to the neighbor. Is it possible to add in motion light for flood light? Correct. I, I'm I'm fine. I just felt that it should be discussed. It was brought up by comment. Yes, yes sir. That's, 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 that's what it said. Now you got to remember, uh, if, if you get a grace period of six months, if you, this, this point in order did not change. Mm -hmm. 
and the way we evaluate that is based off of the section that we're taking out, whereby when we have one of those. The way we enforced that ordinance was it was a portion of the ordinance whereby we talked about having those, once they were identified, we would send them a letter and ask them to correct them, is what we did. Um, and we've had several of those in the past. I've, I've actually been over here at 12 o'clock at night to, to uh, identify floodlights that were shining on other folks' properties uh, when we had a, a complaint that we felt needed to be addressed. And we have sent letters out, and they have corrected them. Thank you, Tim. What, what's your pleasure? Are you ready to vote? Yes. Are you, yes. Are you going to propose any changes to it or as it is? As is, except for the one change that was already noted. Okay. All right. We're going to vote. Mr. Murdoch? Aye. Ms. Pat? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Doctor? Aye. All right, the vote is unanimous to approve. All right, we're going to go to 6B, as in boy. <laughs> okay. Ms. Ferguson. It's, it's me. 6B is in 17. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 6B is in 17. I'm lost. We're going 17, sir. Discussion. Oh, oh, I see where I wrote it down wrong. Okay, you're right. Thank you. All right, Ms. Pat? Um, yes. As we continue to try to make the paid parking as seamless as possible, um, I have continued to talk to members of the police department and look around about, about things that might be easy to do that can better clarify some of what we're trying to achieve. Um, based on discussions with some of our police force, there have been a couple of suggestions made for improved signage. Um, even though we all say we don't want to have thousands of signs on our island, obviously, it is the police force's opinion that we could benefit from having some signs on Ocean Boulevard that are more frequent near the bridge and then become less frequent as you go away. So when people come on the island, they are seeing frequent reminders, parking is prohibited except in designated areas. And there's an example sign in here that again, the police force has, has suggested to me and there also seems to still be confusion about parking in the LSV spaces where it is for LSVs only. And there was a suggestion that perhaps we need, we would benefit from attaching another sign that would, that would specifically add that there are no cars or trucks allowed because LSV is not registering with people. So those are, those are two separate things from the third one that needs a four vote. There has also been some lack of clarity on where we are prohibiting parking from 2 to 5 a.m. on the island. Um, you'll remember that originally the idea was there would be no right-of-way parking except in designated areas. And we, after a lot of discussion and people who had said they didn't want right-of-way parking, then saying they didn't realize that meant they could not park in the right-of-way adjacent to their house. So we changed the right-of-way for this summer, for this year, while we try to figure out what to do before next year. But the idea was to let people in the residential areas park in their right-of-way, the right-of-way near their house, once, it, once we are after the paid parking hours, and that people would not have to move their vehicles from 2 to 5 when they're in those residential areas. However, we did not want them parking in the large areas of town designated parking. So that, it seems that that, that was not getting across clearly. So after talking to the police department about it, um, 
we thought that perhaps putting into the ordinance a table that specifically says where parking is prohibited from 2 to 5 a.m. would clear this situation up for people. So I have created an amended ordinance 2216 that simply adds a table under 72028 that designates the spaces where parking is prohibited from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. And I would like for us to, if everyone agrees, approve this ordinance change today. It's the first reading, but if there are four votes to approve it, the simple addition of a table, we can go forward. And separately, I would like um, board discussion and hopefully approval on going forward with additional signage as proposed in on page 159 and 160 of the packet um, that again perhaps will help clarify to people who are not familiar with what is happening on the island um, so that they don't make mistakes that cost them money in tickets. So it's really two separate motions. One would be on the vote of the ordinance, and the other would be on approving going forward with additional signs. And I agree with that. Uh, there there is uh, seems to be some confusion there, especially with the low-speed vehicles uh, versus a car. And uh, the signage would be, uh, I think, would, would help that situation considerably, as well as some signs that... Uh, that, you know, parking is only available in the designated areas. It, it, it's, it's been a little confusing, especially for our visitors. So uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, improve our signage. Uh, like you said, basically for starting at the east end, working west, and uh, the, for at Jordan Boulevard headed east the same way. So I make a motion that we uh, improve our signage on the island but do it at as minimally as possible. So what's the motion? I make a motion to approve the signs on the... In the ordinance. Yeah. Okay, you, you make a motion to approve the proposed written document that you have in your hand. Right. Okay. All right. Is there a second? Second. Okay, a couple of questions, if I may. Uh, town, town staff commented and reviewed Money available and all that kind of thing. That was the question I was going to have. Is did y'all prepare uh, an estimate on how many signs and what the cost is for it? Anybody got an idea? We did not drill down a total number. It's, it's actually in the discussion between Chief and I and, and back and forth with Mr. Pat. We're talking, Jim can probably tell us how many of us these so the answer is no but um, based on the budget amendment that is that was that preceded this and what w the cost that we incurred before to get the the signage in place and stood up, um, I, I think it's fine as as far as the the cost and the signage. One thing that Scott just mentioned that the post is required for each new sign. Right. However, it may be a thought that you take down the old no parking sign right. and use the same use the existing post. So I think you're good there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for the signage, we have a motion and a second. Is there any, I mean, I'm, I am fine to go 
by the police force's recommendations on number of signs. They're out there. They've been, they've, they've been around. They kind of have an idea of what they think. Okay. I, I, I would like to bring forth a, another parking problem that we've, we've touched on before, but places like the Holden Beach Chapel, uh, if I've had people call me and say that on the on the internet now is directions from friends giving friends information to go park at the Holden Beach Chapel because it's free. Uh, there are also some comments about businesses when they're closed go park in their parking lots. Uh, I don't have an answer or a proposal, but I'm just saying uh, there are, are problems out there, and I don't know how we're going to address those problems, but. You know, when the chapel has funerals and weddings and activities, you know, it, it's going to be an issue. Um, and I don't, I know that's privately owned property, but what we, we, the town, are doing, if we're not careful, we're going to be driving people to these private, privately owned sites. And uh, I'm just giving a friendly reminder of some of the issues and complaints that I'm hearing as mayor. And I don't. I don't know where we're going to go with it, but I'm not opposed to what you're talking about now. I, I mean, I did at the beginning of, of all of this wonder what would happen with the chapel, and I'm disappointed that there are directions being given. I thought my understanding at the beginning was this would require a complaint um, to come so that it could be enforced, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm wondering if Again, the, the people who are in charge of the chapel and any of the business areas you may be discussing um, need to put up specific signs that this parking is for da 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 da, -da only, and then there needs to be a enforcement, and it, it will have to be complaint-based enforcement, correct? Yes, ma'am. The, the current legal backing that we have is to tow at the property owner's request. There is actually no crime other than trespassing and without getting into a whole dialogue, that's about as close as you get. I'm sitting here thinking when y'all are discussing it that we probably need to speak with Mr. Green on the legality of an ordinance if you chose that affected the commercially zoned locations. I'm not sure if that's even legal, but it would take some research. But the only thing we can do is, is and we've had one with the new trolley shop. We, we had one pull in there and take off to the beach that, um, and I'll just say the local going rate right now for everybody listening is 200 plus if your vehicle gets towed versus paying to park at 15. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready to vote? I, 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 have, I have another question. Are, are y'all just talking about the signs now, or are you talking about the ordinance, too? I, I think they're a separate vote, the signs versus the ordinance. We're talking about ordinance right now, aren't we? We're talking about the Sign. signage, Sign. not the ordinance change yet. The vote, the motion's on the floor is the, the signage. signage. Yes, All right, everybody ready to vote on the sign ordinance? I have one question. How many uh, signs were damaged with spray paint so far? Four. Four? Yes, yeah, so far we've had four signs that were vandalized. Um, they have all been fixed or replaced. We did that ourselves without involving the town at this point. But if that something continues and the new signs are damaged, then that would probably be a reason to have to raise the price of parking, right? I'm sorry? If that continues or they damage these new signs, we would eventually have to raise the rate of parking to pay for damages, correct? That's up to the town. Okay. Okay, I'm going to call for the vote and this is an objection. Need all the help I can get. Thank you. Mr. Murdoch, are you in favor of the motion? Aye. Ms. Pat? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Doctor? Aye. It's unanimous, Madam Clerk. And now, you want to make another motion, Ms. Pat? If, if, yes, if no one has 
well, I'll make a motion so we can have discussion if necessary. But I would move that the board vote to adopt ordinance 2216 as written, which has the addition of a parking prohibited from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. table in 72028. I will second that. All right, discussion. Here's where I had a question, if, if I may. Um, I, I know that in the past I, that I had attempted to um, interject making an accommodation for folks that wanted to fish at night um, and, and to park there, but to no avail. But I, I do want to point out that um, prohibiting fishing at 441 Ocean Boulevard West, that's the pier, and that if we're going to proceed with a commercial operation down there and not allow <coughs> parking at the pier at night, that's going to constrain the vendor's ability to make a profit down there and I'm thinking about when spot season comes in even though spots don't run like they do um, you know there's a period of six to eight weeks where um, at one time um, fishing occurred all night long for two for two months in a row and so I just I just wanted to put that on the table and however and, and, and I hear you I think my point right now is Number one, the pier is not open. Huh. And, we, yeah. and number two, when we do open the pier, when the day comes, there will be a certain amount of parking that will be associated with the business. But clearly, we can revisit this um, a couple years down the line when we've got that pier open again. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we registered it and didn't forget yeah. about it. Because we did leave the Jordan area open for people who fish off the in this area. But thank you for that. Okay, any more discussion? You ready to vote? Mr. Murdoch, are you in favor? Aye. Right. That was a yes? Yes. Okay, Ms. Pat? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Doctor? Yes. Uh, it's unanimous, unanimously approved. <coughs> Are we through with your request, Ms. Pat? With your help, we can see if we can move now to number seven, the police report. Is that where we are? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Dilworth. Chief picked a good day to be out of town, I guess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't tell me I had a 200-page book. Um, on the uh, police report itself, um, are there any questions, number one? What's the train accident? Train accident? Um, which page? Uh-huh. Which page? Oh. Page if you 28. A train accident. It says train accident one. I just wanted to read it before. Um, I didn't catch that when I was reviewing it earlier. Um, I'm not sure. aware that, that we a, had a train is, over here. Is Chief, that a, did we have a train over here? Is that a trolley? No, what happens sometimes is is in the chaos of the 911 center, the wrong unit gets put on a call with just okay. a couple keystrokes. So. That, that would be an erroneous. I just wanted to make sure I didn't yes. miss anything. We had a train. Um, <laughs> I missed catching that. I missed that earlier. I, did, I went through, and because I, I assumed I might have some questions, the, 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 on page 26, the disturbance or disorderly subject. Only one of those was on the island. The other eight were assisting the sheriff's department, just, just for peace of mind. Um, the improperly parked vehicle, uh, I went through and counted all the other parking calls that we had earlier, and it shows 41, which is accurate, but there's also some meet with complainants and some trespassing calls that brought that total dealing with parking to 60. 
um, and and most of those are exactly complaints of what Miss Pat just um, brought up and y'all have addressed. So, um, other than that, you know, typical busy summer. Um, we're we're rotating the schedule around the best we can. We're still too short, looking to fill those two positions. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Varner and his staff have been handling the majority of the parking, which certainly helps helps us with that. Um, we can direct our attention more accordingly. Um, our officers are saying they're getting more compliance with low speed vehicles, um, with restraints specifically. Um, I think we did have some conversation with some of the rental providers and um, that apparently that information is getting put out properly. Um, I would encourage anybody listening not from the area that if you are looking to bring an out-of-state low-speed vehicle, i.e. golf cart, please see the town's website or give the police department a call before you bring it down here. And please call the police department and ask them, not the person you might have rented from or anything like that. Um, and we don't have an answer to this, but the chief wanted me to mention that we have not had the need to, to close the left lane on the bridge any since Memorial Day weekend. Um, you were over here, you, you probably saw it too, that uh, traffic never backed up past the top of the bridge Memorial Day weekend. Um, I don't, we don't have an answer, don't have a reason. I know that. I think a lot of the people that we made it do it in the past just turned to the right only, figured out that was the best way to do it. You know, yes. that a little bit of training went a long way, I believe, Frank. Yes, and he, Chief did mention it. He thinks it maybe the, there was a time change on the trash route that may have significantly helped with that as well. Um, and the automated check in may have a lot to do with it, checking out and checking in without having to actually go to one of the businesses. So. But we're going to keep watching it if the need arises. Our folks are ready to, to take that step if they need to. So. I was just going to ask, are you just going to be proactive about it the 4th of July weekend? Um, since we're, most of us will already be here anyways, it'll be, yeah, <laughs> it'll be very simple to, to monitor that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Any, any further questions? Well, Frank, I just a uh, couple reminders again for the, as you cautioned uh, some of the, our visitors, uh, we just want to make sure that they do understand that the state law does require seat belt use in low speed vehicles along with child restraints, no child in the lap. That's, uh, that is, you can't do that in your car. And on a seat, and on a low speed vehicle, that's, that's even worse. Also, there seems to be recently some current concerns with lithium battery operated low speed vehicles. Those batteries work until a, a certain voltage level and then they will, when it drops off, they stop. So be mindful when you're following a golf cart that that golf cart, if it's equipped with this particular type of equipment, can cause an issue to where it could stop abruptly. Uh, the other one is when you, if you have a a lithium operated low speed vehicle just like we have seen in the past with the little skateboard things and that kind of stuff charging those can be hazardous and it is recommended that you never use an extension cord on the charging apparatus for a low speed vehicle it needs to be plugged directly into a proper 20 amps um, receptacle uh, an another note uh, there was an accident up in Statesville this past past week to where a car veered a little past uh, the center line and hit a golf cart, which resulted in a five-year-old's death and critically injured a two-year-old, 13-year-old, 16-year-old, and a 26-year-old driver. So low-speed vehicles are dangerous. We want to make sure that our visitors are aware that, you know, give them, give them some room and uh, be patient. You're at the beach, different time warp here than in most places. <laughs> And uh, wear your seat belts, please. 
I think the other thing we overlook sometimes to remind everybody is you are required to be a licensed driver. So all rules that apply to a motor vehicle apply. Uh, we can go to through those points over and over, but I have run into that once last week already. Um, even the number of occupants for those on the stage or staggered licensing system applies too. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thanks to your department for all that you do. Yes. Chief Todd, Fire Department report. <clears throat> Thank you all for inviting me here tonight. I uh, only come a couple times a year uh, to give an update on the Fire Department. I enjoy coming and give this. Uh, we still have three fire stations in operation. We have a total of 30... 41 personnel, 16 of them are full-time employees, 11 of them are part-time employees, and we have 10 volunteers and four administrative people to help us run the station. So far this year, we've responded to 777 calls, uh, 1,695 last year, 1,192 in 20, and in 19, 1401. So as you can see, our call volume is increasing every year. Um, <coughs> The uh, mainland side, we had 624 calls so far this year, compared to 1307 last year. Uh, 26 in Barnum Town, 54 in, in 21, 92 in Holden Beach so far this year, and 275 total last year. Uh, 35 each way calls so far this year, and 59 total last year. Uh, our average response time on the mainland uh, is uh, five minutes and 29 seconds. Uh, in, so far this year, and in five minutes and 36 seconds, or the uh, last year. Farm Town, five minutes and 25 uh, for this year so far, and then 523 for last year. For Holden Beach, six minutes and 56 seconds so far this year, seven minutes and 22 seconds total for all the calls we had last year. Uh, that gives us an average of five minutes and 39 seconds of response time so far this year and an average of 5 minutes and 53 for uh, last year for all the calls. <clears throat> so far this year, we've done 2,042 hours of training. In 21, we've done 4,064. In 2020, we've done 4,655. In 2019, we've done 4,419 hours um, as far as training hours. Um, I will tell you, so far this year, we've had three structure fires on the island. Uh, the most notable one was the one right down the street here in the 200 block. Um, we had one that was contributed to a lightning strike down near Swordfish Street. Very minimal damage. Uh, most of the eaves of the house was what was burnt uh, on the back eave of the house. And the most recent one was down at 147 OB East. Um, that one uh, was contributed to the exhaust fan in the bathroom. Was what we we determined to, to be the cause of that fire. Uh, the one down in the 200 block this way was undetermined. It was burnt to the point that we couldn't really figure out what exactly caused that one. We do know it started underneath the house in the, the lower area, but as far as exactly what caused it, we, we couldn't determine that. Um, and we had a small trash can fire last night in the 200 block. Uh, Save the trash can. The trash can didn't burn up, but it got this, it was all confined inside the trash can. So. That's, that's where we are so far this year, if y'all have it. Um, I will tell you that we're moving forward with our, our new station at, uh, over on Sabbath Home Road. Uh, it's still in the engineering process uh, of it. Hopefully, uh, we'll have all that back and meet with the uh, architect in July and hopefully be able to put it out for bid in August to determine if we're really going to have enough money to build it with everything that's going on. Uh, it's not, not going to be a cheap project. It's, it's going to be a little bit about around $4 million to build a new station over there for what we need. Um, I don't have any questions. Any questions of the Chief? No, sir. Us property owners here at Home Beach really do appreciate what you guys do. Uh, for a 5 minute and 39 second re response time, that's, that's remarkable. Well, I, I will tell you, the one on the island is a little bit longer because we 
we only staffed the island from, um, we started this year trying to, the first of May, and we'll try to go through the end of September this year for staffing the island during the day from 7 to 7. So at night time, they're having to come from the main station on Sabacone Road, so if it's on the far end of the island, it, it takes us a while to get down there. So that, that's the reason our response times are a little bit higher on, on the island, because some of these calls do happen at night, and then some of them were before we started staffing the station over here. But since we started staffing, the response times are comparable to, to the other stations when we do have calls in the daytime. Um, and we've, uh, we've only had one call so far as far as to do a water uh, rescue, and I'm not really sure if the, the gentleman, it was a water incident or a medical emergency. I'm not, I've never heard anything back from the outcome of that call that was down near the pier. How is the water pressure on the island, one end or the other? Mm. Of course, when we get past where it comes across uh, on the west end of the island, our pressure starts dropping. Um, but anywhere in between the loop, we, we have pretty decent pressure um, on the system. Um, right now, if y'all probably aware, they've they got a certain conservation, so we're only using water. When we have to use water, we don't use it for training, don't use it watch the vehicles unless we absolutely have to and try to do our part as far as conserving water. Uh, but when it comes to having a fire or something, we, we do what we have to do with the fires. We, uh, I, will, I will say that I've talked to the mayor a couple of times. I've talked to the town manager. Uh, I'm in favor of a second water tank. I, I, you know, I think that would help us tremendously, especially on the west end of the island, to get our static pressure up to give us more water available when when the, town, when the county does have problems. I mean, it, it, they're going to have problems. They're doing all this infrastructure and, and infrastructure and upgrading the water lines and stuff. And, and I'm sure you all are aware, not too long ago, the whole south end of the county was without water for a little while. And they were doing a tap, and the, and the tap went wrong and blew the line out. So it was a big part of the day they were without water on the south end. So having a second water tank would give us apple some an extra safety factor of having some water available. Something like that would happen. Would not want you to run out of water putting the fire out at my house. No, sir. Uh, <laughs> and I would tell you, we're not against drafting salt water if we can get to it. And we, we'll pump salt water if we have to, if that's what it takes. But yes, sir. We, don't, we don't want to have to use it if we don't have to. Um, Thank you. All right, any more questions? Chief, we appreciate what yes, all you do. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Evans, Inspections Department. If I can start off, this is uh, the first of what um, what we hope will be a recurring report to the board, um, like Police Department, Inspections Department, and we will refine the content of the report based on what the board would like to see. All right, first of all, um, I appreciate y'all letting us give this report. Uh, the inspection department has been very, very busy, much like everywhere else in the county. Um, we have uh, picked up exponentially uh, starting with COVID and uh, what appears to be uh, uh, a pretty good housing boom at this time. We have a lot of people moving to the county. I spent some time with other planners in the county a week ago, and I can tell you that the county is going to be a very busy place over the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and Holden Beach doesn't get left out of that. Uh, I think that a lot of people don't understand that the inspections department is a, is a department that has employees who fill a role to enforce both the rules, the regulations, and to follow the process and the guidelines that are written by the town's uh, uh, elected officials. So when we do our job and we do it right, we are not, we are burdened with the inability to cut the corners to provide a service just because you would like to have a fast-paced action. It can't be done especially in a coastal environment. We can limit the impact uh, that, it, that it takes in order to issue those permits, but we cannot 
we cannot reduce the process to the point where we're really not carrying out our core responsibilities. And with that said, across the state of North Carolina, and if you're building in a coastal high hazard environment, you can count on at least 5,000 pages of rules and regulations that your staff at the town has to, to either be aware of, make themselves aware of, know where they're at, go find them, and then imply, uh, apply them where they go. Holden Beach to Family Beach. And I, I don't normally do this because every department thinks they're important and every department thinks they're doing a really good job. But every inspector is responsible for the safety of every person that they go out and do an inspection for. We're not a nuisance. We're there to, to make sure that you build a safe home for you to live in. NCDOI is who governs inspections departments in the state of North Carolina. Because if you don't, don't follow the rules and regulations, you're not only harming people, you're harming the economy, you're, har you're harming property. And so the job they do is very, very important. I, I would venture to say that the numbers for the fire department would be up all over the state if inspectors didn't follow the rules and enforce the process and the guidelines that makes those homes safe. And you know what that makes the inspectors? You know what that makes the planners? You know what makes the zoning officers? You know what makes them? It makes them very unpopular. Okay. Dedicated to keeping families and visitors say, we have, we're basically an island of rentals. We're building structures for people to come stay in on the weekend, and we're doing it primarily to make money. So somebody's got to make sure these folks are safe. And when these homes are getting built, we're doing our job, and we're making just, just that. So that when someone does come to stay, hopefully if they're staying in one of the homes that were built in the last 13 years, they got a real safe environment to stay in. All right, rules and regulations applicable to development and construction. Well, everybody knows that's what we do, and that's within the corporate town limits. All right, plan review. A lot of people don't understand what this is. They think that this is a process where you bring it in, I flip two pages, and I sign it, and I send it out. Some people are involved in some of this plan review. And if, if you don't follow the rules and the regulations and the lists and the guidelines, then we're going to send those things back because we're there to try to implement the process that the elected officials are required. Plan reviews are performed on all applications that require modifications in land disturbing activities. <coughs> they require interaction with the permit applicants, whether they are homeowners, contractors, architects, permit and permit representatives. They must be checked for compliance with all state, local, and federal guidelines. The, this isn't the option. I can be charged with gross incompetence for every application that I put my signature on by the state of North Carolina that doesn't comply with these rules. That's not made up. That's real. That's facts. Not adhering to the rules affects the island's resilience, the safety of the public, CRS ratings, and increases possible economic loss to the consumer and the public. Permit plan review. <clears throat> requires of all requires on is required on all applications for permit exceptions being some minor permits such as electrical and change outs. Zoning plan reviews required for any permit that has an impact or implication as to the town's ordinances and rules. Camera permits reviews. They apply to permits as required by the NCDEQ and the Coastal Management Act and ordinance complaints. complaints. The department acts to mitigate ordinances of regulatory complaints, issue violations, and follow up. Staff performed the following reviews for the last physical year. Building reviews, 1,397. Zoning reviews, 202. Camera permits. 75, stormwater, 66, floodplain management reviews, 45, complaints, 38, recombination of properties, 13, vegetation and walkway locates, 265, and then we had 613 approximate uh, uh, consultations or appointments with contractors 
and uh, some homeowner. Total for that is 2,714. Okay, building inspections. Now that was just zoning, that was just plan review. Building inspections. The state of North Carolina requires every municipality and county to hire a properly certified inspector or contract with a government entity that has a certified inspector for compliance with the North Carolina Building Code. And those inspectors hold jurisdiction are responsible for enforcement of the North Carolina Building Code. Holding Beaches Inspections Department. Employees and function. We have an administrative assistant. We have a plan reviewer and an inspector. That person was just hired. She's being trained as we speak. A fully certified inspector. That's myself. An administrative assistant at the Holding Beach Planning Department has the following employees. An administrative assistant. That is the same person that handles that process for the, for the building department. A planning, zoning, local and camera officer and the planning director, who's also your fully certified inspector. Keeping your community safe requires making the tough decisions. Not enforcing the rules is considered gross incompetence under statutory law, and the inspector can and will be charged by the governing board or NCDOI qualification board. And they, they do, they do that. They take over some inspections departments. They go do investigations. Plan reviews, 432. Permits issued, 1,049. Inspections performed, 3,187. Stock work orders, 56. Complaints filed with the appropriate agencies, 41. Those are the ones where we kept the, catch the unlicensed contractors doing work who aren't qualified, and we, t we actually instigate an investigatory action and have to assist with those things in order to make sure that our citizens are safe from those types of folks. Major code violations, destruction of properties, six. The destruction of properties is where we have contractors come in who don't get permits, and then they destroy the house beyond 50%, and the homeowner is basically left with a shell and no way to, with, at a high dollar expense in order to get it fixed. A lot of times we also file complaints for those as well. This total is 4,771. The planning and inspection department personnel, every single permit issued and every single plan review requires an action on the part of the employee. Training and con ed are required for every position in order to maintain the required certification. And a total of almost 400 hours of con ed is required every year for the folks that are in your inspection department. A little blurb over here. The, the structural value, valuation increase for last year, this is, an, uh, this is not an estimate. This actually runs through our, our system. And this doesn't count electrical, mechanical, and all that. What it does count is new homes, uh, additions, and that kind of stuff is, is above $40 million. Rev The revenue collection, this is what we collected. If you'll notice, it's much higher than what we get credit for in the budget year. It's because we do a lot of collecting for other departments. We collect the water, the sewer, and other stuff for, it, for the other departments. So the revenue collections at 652000 is what's run through our system. If it's incorrect, yeah, it's the system error. This report does not include planning board attendance, board of commissioners attendance, board of adjustments committee attendance, or any other interaction for assistance, other apartments, or directives from the board on ordinances or required planning for the town. Many outside regulatory requirements, such as the hazard mitigation plan, or land use plan, or the required statutory rework of the town's ordinance, such as the 160D ordinance. And I'll give you, I'll finish up with this. For every certificate of occupancy that was issued this year, and this is a minor, this, well, I say it's minor, this is indicative of what happens and what we're required to do. But every CO that we issued, when the contractor is finished, and the file is closed, we then have to deal with six other agencies to make sure that they get the information that they need so that the, the citizens can get the services that they should have. The trash can don't show up by itself. That's one of them. 
tire don't get turned on by itself. That's another one. But there's six of those agencies. So once you're done with it, we're not done with it. And then we're required to hold your certifications, your B-Zone certificates, and your, your uh, elevation certificates, we're, and the CAMA permits. We're required to maintain and hold those files for perpetuity because they are required for follow-up visits from agencies that directly affect your insurance rate. Your inspections department is who's been doing this stuff. And the, the inspection department, and I can say this without a shadow of a doubt, and I say this with every bit of the passion that I have, has done a really good job here. We've lowered your CRS rating. To my knowledge, we've had no one get hurt. And uh, I put my heart and soul in this. If anybody that knows me knows the, the amount of work that I've put in to this department, we got some really good employees over there and they work really, really hard. And they've done a really good job. Okay, so hey, good evening everyone. Before I can present this to you, I think that we may need to do just a brief history recap to get to where we are now. So in the 2015, I don't have the exact date in front of me, time frame, the town entered into a uh, mutual agreement where the beautification club, there were some members who had talked to the Department of Transportation. There was a project that was undertaken at that time, a, some grant funding paid for the project to go in, but the agreement was that the north side of the bridge falls in the county's jurisdiction. The county would not contribute any funding towards the project. It, they would agree to let us do something to that area because people wanted to see something happen coming into the beach. Um, DOT had to approve the project. Once they did those grant funds, they were done. They would not contribute any more money to the project. And for here on out, it belonged to Holden Beach for us to do maintenance. So here's where we are now. You only have three choices. We have been working on this since way before last September. Um, we've had DOT on site. DOT's made some comments like they would never undertake this type of project again to have plantings on the banks of the bridges and because it um, can be detrimental to the integrity of the bridge. So where we are to this point is there are only certain things that DOT is going to allow us to do that also fall in their planting guidelines. Um, of approved plants and um, trees and shrubs. So there's been a lot of coordination and back and forth. Ultimately, we wanted this proposal to be here way before tonight, but this is the best that could happen because Carolina Creations, who is the current landscape contractor, had to put together a plan. That plan had to go to DOT for review to see if they would even approve it if you guys wanted to move forward. And so here we are that Tonight is the earliest that you could see it. Um, again, we did want it to be a part of the budget discussions, but that couldn't occur. So if you look at the proposals that we asked them to put together, there are basically three options that you could choose. Option one would be to um, cut ties with the north side of the bridge and to no longer provi provide maintenance over there. It would be for them to do service on the island side only. So your island side only, um, parks and open spaces and irrigation would be a total of a contract for one year for $59,152.48. If you wanted them to keep just doing what they're doing um, for both sides, that would be an increase from the current price and it would go up to a total of $67,145.64. 
and if you wanted to pursue a project which is why we started the discussions in the first place because we heard a lot of feedback about people wanted to see something different on that side your project calls to put in 25 palm trees remove the mulch areas and plant centipede turf grass would be the project cost of thirty seven thousand five hundred fifty six dollars the increased irrigation that you would need to go along with that would be $3,202.56, and the new cost for maintenance to cover both sides would go up to $85,000. So your total to do a project on that side and the maintenance that would go along with it would be at option three, $125,924.14. For your convenience, I also included the bid tab that came in when we bid out the project in 2020. At that time, Carolina Creations was the lowest bid and it shows you what the others came in at at the time. Currently, what is proposed is not um, covered in the proposed budget for the fiscal year. So if you turn to page 43 of your agenda packet, it tells you what additional funds would be needed to the budget considering the options. Option one would need a little over 1,200 more and then you go down through option three. Um, the delta is recommended to come from fund balance in the general fund that currently is split between Jordan Boulevard, Jordan Boulevard Ops in B part and our general fund. Question comments, commissioners. <clears throat> Everybody full of shock, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, I didn't want to be the messenger on this one if it helps. So if we abandon the mainline side, what happens? Does DOT come remove what's there? Mm -mm, it just goes back. Join, join with me here, David, if you heard something different. But it it when, turns brown. Yeah. When, when, we, when we met with them, it would just go back to their care like they had it before. You know, they were in charge of it before 2015, so it's so nothing. I would, I would just simply like to admit <clears throat> that we have the ugliest approach to our bridge of any island in Brunswick County. Mm -hmm. uh, I must agree, however, with uh, the budget restraints we have for 22-23, I don't see how we can go with uh, the, 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 full, the full program. However, I do feel like option two might be our best approach for this year. This is a one-year contract, correct? Yes, sir. Being a one-year contract, that would allow us to maintain that to some degree and move forward possibly in future years. You could reevaluate before your contracts do next time um, for something different. You would be basically getting what you're getting now. So they would be servicing this side and the north side, and it would be the 67 amount in option two. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are listening and watching I'd like to remind them that the town of Holden Beach is not on the mainland. The town of Holden Beach is the island. So what we're talking about on the north side of the bridge is controlled by Brunswick County and the Department of Transportation. So what we would be doing is spending Holden Beach town money on county controlled property, county controlled property and DOT right of way property. Yes, sir. It's still ugly, though. Christy, is have have you have we reapproached Brunswick County for any possibility, any possible support with uh, our, making that? Our agreement with Brunswick County outlines the responsibilities to which they have none. That that to actually took a three a, thir a three party agreement um, to allow us to take that project on. And the only other thing I'd add, I think Tim was about to add something, but the only other thing I'll add to you is I also hear feedback about people getting upset about, even during political season, the political signs going there, but people sticking advertisement signs there all the time. But just so you're aware, we have no jurisdiction 
over those signs. Rhonda and Tim can't go take care of those signs because we pay for the garden, but we have no jurisdiction over sign removal. At, at the planners meeting, I brought up the uh, long idea of us capturing our ET, uh, being able to uh, discuss some ETJ responsibilities there. And the feedback I got was was that the commissioners are not are not uh, conducive to releasing any of those ETJs uh, to any towns. Apparently, it's come up, and they're just not doing it. Which which made me qu ask. You know, are you going to do anything about to help us with our causeway, our corridor? And um, I, I think it would be good for the town to allow me to follow up with the county's planner because I didn't get negative feedback. What I got was I felt like we could have a conversation there about maybe guiding, having some input on the guidance of what was going to happen out there. Because it's starting to work out there. You can see it moving. Um, so I, I did bring it up at the planners meeting. Yeah, it seems to me that the time to talk about it is while they're doing their corridor study, which is happening this summer. Tim, your participation in that would uh, would be appreciated. However, is there not some way, since it is uh, considered Brunswick County, that, uh, the, that is a right of way? And, uh, can Dr. Brunswick County Sheriff's Department help us with uh, removing such signage? Well, I would imagine, I'm not sure, we, we can contact uh, the county's uh, code enforcement to see if they might be willing to come and take a look at it or uh, and see what their, what their ordinances read and how they'll deal with that. But typically, you know, agencies don't get involved in other agencies, uh, especially code enforcement. They don't interact with in other, each other's jurisdiction. But I, I think the best course of action would be to interact with the planning department. Because typically they're running those. And, and uh, they do have one person that's over uh, all of that now. And I met him the other day. So there's no, you know, we, we can't tell people to stop putting them there. So then uh, on the reverse side of that, we can't stop people from removing them from there, correct? If somebody <laughs> wanted to take them down, they could do that. In the middle of the night? I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't, I'm not going that way and Frank's covering his ears. But, I mean, if we can't stop them from putting it in, then we can't stop somebody from taking them out. And uh, I was just told by the attorney that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I would like, uh, as far as is, is trying to get this get this done, and, and not again, as Mr. Our Mayor uh, tried to say as nice as you could. It's not the most beautiful interest, but it is better than it was before. And if we would, I'd like to make an motion to approve option two to authorize the town manager to make appropriate adjustments to expenses with the general fund balance and to execute the contracts. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All in favor, beginning with Mr. Murdoch. Well, before you vote, he actually he, dropped off. So you guys can go. I say, how many I have left now? <laughs> you still got your core, but you can go back to your normal way of voting if you'd like. Uh, okay, so now we're back to verbal and hands, okay? All right, so all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. It's still unanimous, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Thank you all for your help. Good job, Christy. It's a challenging evening to keep up with this. Okay. <laughs> all right, Mr. Hewitt, are you next to number 12? Yes, sir. All right. The budget ordinance 2214, which is the budget for the upcoming fiscal year starting 1 July of 22 through 30 June of 23 is before you for your consideration and possible adoption. <clears throat> it's the result of, of departmental inputs, commissioners workshops. We've had a couple of meetings to address the various items that have gone into the budget. Those uh, inputs 
amendments and tweaks have all been incorporated into the budget um, and it's ready for your adoption unless you want to make some further uh, modifications. Somebody speak. I move that we approve Ordinance 2214, the, the budget ordinance appropriating revenues authorizing expenses for fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022 through 30 June 2023. I'll second that. All right, discussion. Any one of the three of you? Hearing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. All right, unanimously passed, Mr. Hewitt. You're up to number 13, Mr. Hewitt. Yes, sir. Concerning the agreement with the North Carolina Department of Transportation agreement uh, to approve the repaving or uh, resurfacing of Ocean Boulevard to include the bike lane construction. Um, execution of the agreement with DOT is required in order to construct the Ocean Boulevard bike lanes project this fall in conjunction with the resurfacing of Ocean Boulevard. The project is estimated at $1,722,364, of which 42% or $723,393 is the town share. The remaining 58% or almost a million dollars is funded by the Grand Strand Area Transportation Study, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization. The contract can be executed via prior board action to appropriate funds. The project costs are cal will be calculated upon completion and any excess prepayments are returned by DOT per the cost shares mentioned previously. Cost runs likewise will be prorated. We will be advised upon the bid opening as to the viability of the DOT contract letting. The specific bid opening date has not been determined at this time. And to answer the questions, wow, that's kind of expensive. The bike lanes are an integral part of the Ocean Boulevard resurfacing design and cannot be excluded from the bike from the project if it is to be accomplished within DOT's current schedule. If the board wants to move forward with it, you've got to approve this contract tonight. And, and I think this is a good time for me to uh, remind everyone, it seems like in the last couple of weeks I've had more inquiries in regards to people losing their front yards or backyards. And um, just a simple reminder to all property owners along Ocean Boulevard, all of this work will be done within the state right of way and not on anyone's private property. So just make sure everybody understands that. We're not going into anybody's private property for any reason. We are having all this stuff done with DOT's supervision and so forth within the state's right of way. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. All right, anybody want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the TIP agreement. One zero 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 thirteen two nine nine to and direct the town manager to execute the same. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Further discussion. Anyone? Um, I just had seeing this. I just had a couple questions to the town manager or whatever employee, other employee might have an answer. I see that there is a section on municipality responsibilities right-of-way acquisition are we anticipating that we have to do anything I didn't think so the other is municipal utility relocations and what the municipality is responsible for any. there's not going to be any okay so we don't have to we're not going to run into any manpower needs or extra costs 
Okay. Thank you. Well, no, I, I like to qualify that to say none known at this time. I, yeah, I agree. Thank I you. agree. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. My, my only question to, to Mr. Hewitt is these, I think we've already seen some increases in the, the cost of this project. Is there any anticipation that we're going to it's going to do the same uh, before we can get the bids in and, and get this completed? I'm, I'm pretty sure they will be, but I don't know what they will be. Although the bid was revised here about 45 days ago, and what's in what the budget action that y'all took then reflected the most up to date at that point in time. Show sure. cost. It's so the quicker we get this done, the quicker we can uh, uh, you know, eliminate any further costs. Remember, this is the D this is DOT's project, but uh, as soon as the board authorizes execution of it, they're not going to be able to blame me for dallying and getting the paperwork to them for our piece of it. The bid late is this fall sometime. Are we expecting it'll be similar to what happened on Ocean Isle that next spring is when they'll do the paving? That's kind of, we, we think it'll be the same we, kind of process we, we time do, frame. We do not want it to occur during the summer. Time. Yes, I. <laughs> that's what we did. I think that's what she was trying to say. Yeah. We, we, and we can't, we can't have it to occur. And they've, they've um, been really, uh, cognizant of of what the beach community's needs are and, and are scheduled to do it in the off season. Thank you, David. Mary Ann vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous, Madam Clerk. Dr. Dyer, number 14. Thank you. Slush. So with the recent addition of uh, food trucks at the pier and paid parking in situations where people don't want to leave the, the beach to go get a refreshing treat or refreshments so that they don't lose their parking place, um, there's been numerous public issue, uh, questions and comments and opinion and positive towards uh, letting this town run business town owned they're in the uh, city limits and they have a similar plan that they've been doing on Ocean Isle and Oak Island and there's been a lot of residents visitors that are asking why we haven't allowed them to do this um, so I want to allow them to speak about their plan uh, the business plan they do and how it works on the other islands um, at this time I, uh, the, um request is so noted and uh, with the consent of the commissioners uh, that would be granted and uh, also uh, information that supporting documents or whatever you may have in your presentation if one of you come to the podium representing sunset slush what what kind of support documents or pictures or what what do you have that, that yeah. the commissioners need to approve your presentation yeah I just made a uh, picture slideshow that will be playing while we talk it just shows a couple pictures there's an example of what it's just going to be like it's we're not even going to point to it it's just going to be up there so you can kind of see better um, what we're going to be talking about anybody have an objection no sir that'd be fine okay are you, are you the speaker yeah, we're, me and my brother are both going to speak a little bit. All right, you going to sing a dance for us? Yeah. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. Well, first, if you do look at the pictures, I just want you to notice the smiling faces, the kids, the families, the trash that we pick up, everything there. Um, I'm not going to point to it anymore, but that's just something I want you guys to notice. Uh, commissioners, Mayor, just thank you for the time and allowing us to speak today. Um, my mother, Susie, she moved here in Brunswick County uh, when she was in high school. Her mother had a shop on Ocean Beach and ran the post office there. My father, Donald, is a Holden Beach native. We lost him nine years ago. Today would have been his 62nd birthday. Um, this is my brother, Devin. Um, he's been here his whole life. 
he actually pushed the car on Ocean Isle Beach when he was in high school, so that's how we got started. And I'm Drew, been here my whole life. When I was in high school and college, I worked for Mr. Hobbs over at the water slides and the go-kart tracks. So I'm just saying that to say that we're from here, we're Brunswick County natives, we're not Myrtle Beach, we're not trying to bring Myrtle Beach in, that's not the whole point of this. We represent the Brunswick County beaches and I think we do it pretty well. Uh, that leads us to the Sunset Slush history. Uh, Sunset Slush has been around for 20 years, it's our 20th season, we're very excited for that. We've been here at 111 Jordan, Board Jordan Boulevard for 13 seasons. Um, in 2004, both Oak Island and Ocean Isle Beach changed their ordinances to allow pedaling on the beach. So this is the 19th year for that. So it's not something new that's just coming around. It's been here for 20 years and 50% of the beaches in Brunswick County allow it to happen. We are enriched into the community. We actually just won an award where the mayor here was actually gave a lifetime achievement award. We also were given an award for community outreach. So we are very active in the community, donations, every local elementary school, middle school, high school, you'll see us there. So everyone in Brunswick County knows what Sunset Slush is. It wouldn't be something new that we were bringing in. Um, the demand for this has just increased every year. Um, we have become a staple for many people who visit Holden Beach. It's a lot of people before they can even check in, just they come sit at our shop, uh, grab a slush. And over the past five years, it, it's just grown so much. People will ask us why we're not on the beach. We tell them we can't control that. That's not us. We literally get 15 to 20 emails, phone calls, comments before they book their vacation. Hey, do you guys push on Holden Beach? Oh, you only can do it at these places. Well, that's we're going to decide to go over there. And so people out, come to our shop all the time and say, why can't we do it here? So the demand is there. Um, so we're going to try to keep this brief and to the point. So Devin's going to come here and talk a little bit about our cart and how we kind of run the business. Yeah, so my name is Devin. I've been pushing um, a cart on a Brunswick County beach since I was 16 years old. I turned 32 this past year, which means pretty much half my life. Um, and which is probably why I am so excited to be able to do this and present it to you guys every single time that we get the opportunity to come up here. There's nothing like pushing a cart down the beach and seeing the excitement that it brings to the families and the kids that are out there on that strand each and every day. Um, with that being said, though, we do it with the most respect that we can to our island because this is our islands. We live here. We grew up here. Brunswick County Islands is everything to our family. Um, the way that we saw it, and I put a cart out here just in case anybody wanted to see it when they came in. It is only two foot by three foot. Um, our goal is not to be a, um, the distraction to the people who are on the strand enjoying the beach. We are simply there to push and give the opportunity for them to enjoy something while they're out there. When A couple rules for Sunset Slush in general for us when we push down the strand. We do not solicit. We do not stop and wave and try to get your attention to come to our carts. We simply push the carts down the beach strand. We have no bells. We have no whistles. We have no motors to make sound on them. We purposely use a beach umbrella so that we blend in with the other beach umbrellas as we're walking down the strand. Um, the only reason that you know it's us is because we have our classic black and yellow look. Uh, with, that, with that being said, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm looking at this. I'm seeing myself on the pictures up there, and that distracted me there for a second. Um, <laughs> but so our carts, they have balloon tires. We are made so we do not mess up the stru structure of the sand. We, um, our beach pushers have to continuously push. We only allow them to stop once during their route to take a short break to enjoy a snack and a drink, which is well-deserved, as you see. If you've ever seen them, how they push and how hard they do work out there for them. Um, we then, uh, the next step is we have three buckets on our carts. One of them is to hold our cups. One of them is to hold our biodegradable spoons. And yes, I say biodegradable because we do not use plastic. We try to find something you can see. It's actually made out of corn. Um, so that it, it, we will use whatever we can to make a better statement onto the island instead of making it negative. Um, we have opportunities uh, to use these type of cups, which are also another biodegradable form, but we use paper cups with our logos on them if allowed. Um, they will also dissolve in water and dissipate. They will not cause harm to everybody. Our next thing that we offer when we push out on the beach are the koozies. And as you see, this one actually has the turtle patrol from Ocean Isle Beach because this is something we're involved in. We push this type of stuff. It says make our sea plastic free. We do not want plastic in the ocean. We want to limit that. Um, that koozie, by the way, 
we partnered with them and we raised over a thousand dollars to donate back to the sea turtle organization. We did. And what this does is this is a refillable koozie. So now we've taken away the opportunity for them to continue to get trash and to bring trash to the island. This is the one thing they have to have. They can bring it back um, every single day, every single year. They do not have to pry a new one. Um, they, we will refill it for them, a small, medium, or a large, however they like to. So we are going to conserve on that. Uh, the next step is I mentioned three buckets. Well, one of the last buckets is our beach pushers are actually told every single day when they push down the strand to pick up trash, and that is what that bucket's for. That third bucket on that uh, cart will come back with all types of trash, not just sunset slush trash. Um, which trash is a big uh, issue for most people when you talk about a public island. And so those are some of the ways that we limit it. Other things that we also do for us and our business, uh, because we love the island, is we do, you saw people with beat, uh, trash bags on the, our pictures here. We actually hire or we pay our employees to actually go down the strand um, in the past to pick up trash during our work shifts. Um, we sponsor all the ones that allow us to push on the strands. We sponsor their big beach bashes every single time. One of them, we give out free ice to all the people who contribute to it. We're open to doing many other ideas as sponsoring our own and hosting our own where we do those type of things. Um, but so as you see, it's not something that's going to make a negative statement on the island. All it's going to do is bring positivity, joy, enjoyment, and excitement to the island when they're out there on that strand. Um, the last thing I want to say about trash is that it's not going to add more. It's going to be a substitute. So if you guys have families and you go out to the beach, most of you guys are bringing snacks, coolers, and most likely popsicles who are in plastic, um, plastic chips, plastic cans, drinks. This is a substitute. Whenever you know that you no longer, and I'm a, I have three kids under the age of five, I know that I enjoy the fact that I do not have to bring a drink out there or a popsicle out there for my kids. Now they have a substitute controlled by a company who also makes sure to use items that are not going to negatively impact the island itself. Um, the last thing is just appearance. Um, it's very big for Sunset Slush to make sure that we are making a positive appearance. You will not ever see a pusher for us have a bikini on, uh, no shirt on. This basically what I'm wearing is what every single one of our peach pushers uh, wear. They have to have some type of shorts that match their shirt. They have a t-shirt um, and a hat on at all times. Our public appearance is huge to us and it's what we like to respect because we want to make sure that our island is kept as beautiful as possible. And I'll let my brother finish because you can go. And just one more thing about the trash. If you find a Coke can, I don't believe anyone is trying to uh, ban gas stations from selling Coke. I'm sure the Beach Patrol pick up many chairs at the end of the day, and I'm sure no one's trying to ban chairs. I'm sure there's plenty of diapers, and no one's going to try to ban diapers or ban babies either. So it's on the responsibility of the people out there to handle their trash. And one thing about Holden Beach, there's actually trash cans out there. The other beaches don't have trash cans. So that's something that you guys have the advantage of. But we will try to take as much responsibility and take that away from the people, the consumers as much as possible. That's why we've oriented all these things for you. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about, I know you guys won't be discussing just Sunset Slush that come on. You're actually going to have to discuss about changing the order. So just to give you a couple examples of what other islands do, Oak Island, they have no limit. It's 25 bucks a permit. They can as many carts, as many businesses as they want to. Only four businesses has ever been out there. Uh, it's kind of like the food trucks. I'm sure you thought a lot of people were going to apply. It's only a couple people who end up doing it. So it doesn't really open up Pandora's box. Uh, Oceanal Beach, they allow five vendors uh, with up to six carts each. So they allow up to 30 carts. I believe there's only 14 this year. Only four businesses signed up. We've been doing it for 19 years. That's how it always is. Uh, he, he was going to mention one year they did try to bring a hot dog cart. But with the health inspections and all the stuff they have to deal with, it just doesn't last. Um, St. Simons Island, Georgia, where there's another sunset slush, they actually have a bid system. So they only allow one vendor out on the beach. Everyone puts in a bid. They accept who they want. It can be determined by how much money, what's the best fit, anything like that. Indian Beach, Carolina Beach, Wim downtown Wilmington, all these places have their own different rules, and you guys, and with your lawyer, get to decide what those are. Um, some things that people, that they have added, they need to have a brick and mortar in the town. Uh, for here, it could be on the island. Um, there's just different things you can do. We're also suggesting maybe a trial period 
for a month in the summer just to see how it goes. So then you can make a bigger decision later if you want to. So there's many choices that you guys, of course, would have to talk about and figure out. But that's just what we have. Uh, do we? Do you have any questions before we sit down? Any questions? Is is yes. Just move it on. Guys, that's a good, good presentation. Thank you. And what I'm thinking about is, is again, you can talk about for the our visiting the folks. Well, what's you know the, the revenue for the town? I mean, is there any? You just the permit, and well, that's you, it? Wait, so Oak Island's 25 bucks. Uh, Ocean Eye Beach is 250 uh, per permit. St. Simons Island, they have a bid system, so you can bid as much as you want to. Uh, that's something you guys have to decide what would be the revenue, what you would want people to pay. But it is an extra revenue to help the town with any kind of call. Yeah, um, personally, this is something that we're willing to discuss and talk with the town as much as possible, especially with your lawyers, what legally the town can enforce in those aspects. We are all for benefiting the town as well. So if there's uh, avenues, as like we discussed, each town has different ones, which means they can do different things, which means you can do it however it does to benefit you as well. What about the, uh, the, the months? Of operation, what what is there a specific a specific time span? Yeah, You're course. not going to do much business in December. No, so <laughs> usually at Ocean Isle Beach, it's Easter through Labor Day. That's all you're allowed. They actually have a time limit too. You're not allowed to go out before 10 o'clock. You have to be off by 6 o'clock. So those are different rules that you can understand. Well, it's right after Labor Day, so it's mid September. Easter they have specific. They have specific dates that you can do, which is another thing that you guys can discuss and find out which is the best for you. Um, but yes, like you said, it's not beneficial for any business because probably everybody who lives in a town like this knows it dies off completely without the tourists that are here for their vacation. So you can, and this is another thing, we want it to be strict. We want there to be rules. Um, so if you guys do things like this, this is great. This is actually helps our business grow and improve when we do this. What about uh, days of operation? Seven a week? Yeah. yeah. So basically Memorial Day to Labor Day, we would, if you guys allow it, would be seven days a week. There's people on the beach strand every single day. They all deserve the opportunity to have that rich and fresh and treat. Um, they do do the time limits on the other islands so that you can only be out there a certain period of time. And just to give you a little bit more reference on that, um, even though they have a time limit of 6 o'clock, on average, our carts, so we personally, Sunset Slush, we go out there and we start at 11 o'clock. On average, we're off by 2, 2.30. Uh, Fourth of July week, we might get out there till 4 o'clock. So most of the time we're only out there for a very small portion of the time. And like I said, we're constantly moving. We only put six total carts on the island over there, which is, is it seven miles from Ocean Beach? Seven miles. So you hardly see a cart, but maybe once or twice while you're out there on the strand. Um, if you see them, um, if you, it depends on what time of the day you come. And with the island as big as Holden Beach, it'd be the same thing. So we'd only go for a certain period of time. Um, most likely, same thing, 11 to 3 o'clock is about our average for us. Would the, what about limited, maybe some limited locations where there's, there's public access and public? Yeah, we're open to any ideas that you guys would like to throw out there. If there are certain areas on the island, say private sections, um, or anything that does not want it, or do not want to pass those, or those laws in their sections, we're more than welcome to stay under the boundaries of that's, that you guys set forth. Of course, we can only get our carts out at handicap accesses or the emergency accesses. Those are the only places we can get on and off. And I know steps. at Ocean Beach they do have a rule or at the pier you're not allowed to sit by it. Like you have to you have to keep moving unless you're scooping or they're stuck. They, we, they give that little five, ten minute break. And those are the rules that they've set for everybody. What do you do for your, what do you do for your employees' restroom needs? So, yeah, mainly because we're only out there for a couple hours, they are told specifically to use the bathroom before and after. <laughs> of course, if there is an emergency, then, you know, that is just a new part of it. And either we come, we have a person who runs ice to the other guys when they need it, so they can get in the car and we can take them to our restroom, which we have a store on the Holden Beach, so they could do that if they need to, or of course, a public restroom if it was necessary. Right? Of course, and back here is Chris Bland. He runs our uh, Oak Island location, so he's always out there picking up the guys and running ice to them. We'll never leave the cart unattended. So if something like that comes, we have somebody who can come switch spots with them. But I'd say 99% of the time, we've never had anybody have to use the bathroom in that short period of time. <laughs> so, 
So as my brother mentioned before, with all garbage that comes onto the island, it's always going to be the responsibility of the person who purchases the item or brings it, you know, as you, if someone buys the trash or from a gas station on the way in or anything like that. It's always their responsibility. We're more than willing to do and go over the top of doing things to limit that and to also increase the ability of us removing the trash on extra occasions as well. Yeah, I'm sure if someone brings Domino's pizza over, it's not going to be Domino's who picks up their box. Even though we do do that. Yeah, we would do that. <laughs> All right. Any more questions, comments? I'd like to have a question. I have a question for clarification, if it's okay. From uh, yeah, go ahead. It's just some clarification. Did you, you, is Sunset Slush, is that, is it your, your, uh, primary business that does Oak Island, Ocean Isle, and here? Yeah. Yeah, so when we started in the business 13 years ago, we only owned Holden Beach. We now, uh, five years ago, we purchased Ocean Isle Beach and Oak Island as well. So our family pretty much runs all the Sunset Slushes in Brunswick County. The ones outside of Brunswick County are owned by other people. So we did take over the whole company this year, so we own the Sunset, Sunset Slush brand, so we want to be represented very well. And I do want to throw out one more thing, just because I heard it in public comments, that you don't want to open up Pandora's box. And uh, there'd be so many people that come in here wanting to do this business. As he mentioned, um, and as I mentioned, I personally was on the beach. For some reason, this does not happen. Uh, Oak Island's open to everybody. For some reason, only four vendors come out there. I've been on the beach with a hot dog guy. I used to love trading my ice for his hot dogs because it was great. But he only lasted two years because he physically could not do it. There's certain things that last on the island. Ice cream melts too fast. There's been multiple vendors trying it. They last for a year, and then they're gone. Italian ice is one of the only products that lasts out on the beach. It doesn't melt quick enough um, that's able to be doing that. And that's why if you see over the past 19 years, look at all these other islands that allow it. There's not everything else out there selling. Any more questions, comments? All right. Thank, Thank you very guys. much. Thank you for your time. motion of any kind. If not, we'll move on. What's your pleasure? <coughs> Can we vote on making a motion to visit the ordinance change to allow that? Of course. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to, do we, we would have to bring the ordinance to the next meeting. Somebody needs to drive what you want in the ordinance, deal with legal, and bring it back to the board. Okay. Mr. Oh, Evans. And, and, and Mr. Evans, yes. Well, I, I'm not sure, but I think that's in the permitted use section of the land usage, which would require... Business? Which would require planning. Yeah, it's uh, it would be a permitted use. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, I probably need to talk to the attorney about what procedure we need to do to get that changed. Uh, the, 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 okay, the floor is not open. Public, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's my understanding that health, they're not governed by the health department. It's my mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Tim, what? Well, so, so Tim. Tim, what, what would be the first steps to, to well, visiting it, this and making sure there are rules and regulations and stuff? Well, or, depending on where it's at in the ordinance book, and I, I don't want to open that Pandora's box right now because I don't think we, we want to get there, but it depends on where it's at in the ordinance book as to where it needs to go next in order to be changed. If, if, we're, if we're changing the permitted uses, uses, and that's in the land usage section, then... If it's not, then you can simply treat it like a regulatory ordinance and it can be written and brought back and, and go through the proper procedures for ordinance change. For a text amendment is what you're really looking for, I think. Is that something you can do for the next meeting? Bring the text amendment back? Yes, it is. I think, I think we can do that. We can work all work together, but I'll need to work with the attorney. But I think we can get a text amendment and get it back to you. I think if you look at what Ocean Isle has done, it's uh, quite complete. 
Yeah, I, I've already looked at it, and I think the best parts of that are that they're required to have, and I think he brought it up, a brick-and-mortar site in the town, and what that does is limit your your traffic of these outside vendors coming in. Right. If you force them, to, and then they, it answers your question, Rick, what do they bring to the town? If they're here, they're, they're bringing they're bringing some economy with them. So, yeah, I, the ordinance at Ocean Isle is a very good written ordinance. I've already looked at it. So we need the, the motion for us to consider needs to be we need to work with the, you know, the town attorney first. I, I would suggest that if it's your pleasure, commissioners, that you simply give a directive to okay. bring forth a proposed to document for consideration at the next meeting. Well, I think that we, we want to do this. Uh, in a in a in, in the correct it, do do it correctly. We don't want to get started and then get pushed back again. Or, uh, but there's a needs to be first. You find out what can be done, and then there needs to be if uh, agreed by others can be the stipulations can be put in place to uh, to make sure we get it the way we want to or not. Yeah, I think there's a real, yeah, there's a very good model already out there. We just need to look at it, and then we'll we'll get it back. We'll get it back to you. Just that thing. Everybody well, satisfied with that? Yeah, David, you being, I guess it's hope we can't direct him. Can we can we tell ask you to direct him to to, to I, do that? I, I, I think by consensus do we understand that y'all want a, a document prepared and brought back for you if possible at the next meeting. Yes, sir. Just wanted to do it properly. Thank you, Tim. All right. Thank you very much. Good job. Are we on number 15, page 2? Yes. What are, we, what are we doing with Mr. Murdoch? I'm covering for Mr. Murdoch. All right. Uh, Have at it. All right. Um, okay. We all know that we would like to proceed however we are allowed um, to provide parking possibilities on the Marsh streets as if possible. And then the 800 block lot is sort of a separate issue, okay? And I mean, I when the town manager sent us the marsh delineations his his message his message was that um, the core approves the 404 wetland delineation without a site visit and they need to issue a jurisdictional determination which it's not known when it will happen but we've been advised we can proceed with site planning knowing that they will not move any flags. Okay. Well, the jurisdictional determination is a decision by the Corps as to whether the areas are regulated under fe federal statutes, which will be the Clean Water Act, correct? And the fact that they've said they don't need to make a visit, is this simply that they have enough information about the soil, the water, and the plants so that they don't need to come out and do an investigation. It's not an indication that they don't believe that they are going to regulate. Well, I think it's an indication that they know exactly what's what they there and, right. and that it's been de it's delineated as it's marked. Okay. And, and, and any regulations or rules that would apply would have to be adhered to. Okay. So, my, I mean, my question is, before an AGD, a, AJD comes out, can we allow any parking at all in these areas? Well, you, you, you've, got, you've got more than just those lines. You've got the other ones. I have. No, no, I, I understand. I, these yeah. are, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually have, uh, we actually have the survey. Yeah. We actually have the surveys and not the pictures. And we actually went through and tried to determine where we might possibly have parking. 
and they're limited. Y'all saw me going back and forth. It's because I had a pad out here that had all the notes on it, and somehow it's gone. That that pad's gone, and I was so there it is. <laughs> Why didn't you ask the car? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> you should know by now. Heather's in charge. Okay. So just ask Heather to be All right. The, uh, basically, and, and I think some of the question is. And you, you, I can start off, and if I'm not doing what everybody wants me to do, but these, we have the pictures which show, basically show the wetlands, and then we have, I'll try to do this. I'll try to do this. And what, what we have is, is Good job, on, these, on these small pictures. So in this particular case, this is the one that's on the, on the, on the east side of the 800 block, which is down there in the 700 section down there. And everywhere that is yellow is a good opportunity for us to bulkhead and save the land. Okay. Now bulkheading, if the camel line is still on the other side, on the landward side of the bulkhead, does not allow you to park there or use that area. But what it does do is it protects that area for the future. In this particular case, parking is allowed anywhere on the right-hand side of that line based off of where the, the high water mark is. On that, the high water on that mark, document, the it's way water, out there. The high water mark, it, when? When is that? When it's, is that? It, it's actually in the high water, which means that it's, it's, it's out there far enough that it doesn't come into play. Okay. Out there in the marshes. This is the 800 block. And if you take a look at it, you'll see the 75 foot line is all out here. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would need a permit to do, do work would be that towards the marsh area. The uplands are in yellow. We can bulkhead and save all that land, which means that we bulkhead it, we keep it in place, and we can park in those areas, use those areas as parking. Okay? And of course we have we have all the 404 wetlands and everything delineated. Now here's where it gets a little squirrely. Yep. And I'm not really using my notes, so I don't know why I was running around. Um, but we tried to mark, and I know you can't see it on the camera, but the, there's a small area right here where parking may be allowed. What area is that, Tim? This is, this is Greensboro Street, and there's a small area there between W8 and W10. That's it. The, if you, if you, the actual camel line actually goes across the end of Greensboro on the north side, and then it keeps it goes out a little bit right there where you can park on the side of the road, and then it it maintains enough that you don't have enough in there to park. You do not. Okay. No, you you do it, do what that yellow is right in the middle, but it's just a handful of park in places. Okay, this one is sailfish. Sailfish has some on the north end. It's very minor. It has some in the middle, but there's there's two or three there, and then there's some on the end. Um, I think we we calculated we might could get four or five spots there before we went into run into our uh, intersection provisions for the 40 feet. So you get a, you get a few there, and that's it. Most of that road doesn't have any. And then of course I'll go ahead and tell you there is nowhere on swordfish to park. Okay. And last but not least, we have Sand Dollar, which has got some at the north end and some at the south end, just very small. And we, we actually calculated, I can give you the numbers, um, and then, of course, there is none on Scotch Bot. Yeah. Okay. The actual camel line, in some of these cases, has actually come up on the road, and so that puts the marsh out there in such a way. And you can't, you, the town really can't give permission to park in the marsh. And although it may look dry, it is actually considered that. You know what I mean? And they do it through fauna, you know what I mean? Vegetation and that kind of stuff is how they come to that termination. So, as the way we calculated it, there was about, on sailfish, there's about 18 feet. That's 10 feet wide in one area. On, that's in the center section. The south section is about 12 feet wide to 20 feet long. 
And then uh, on sailfish, the north end was about six feet for about, uh, well, about 15 feet, about six feet wide. Um, swordfish, can't keep up? All right. You don't have to show them anymore. Sand, sand dollar was 10, it, it, sand dollar had 10 feet for about 50 feet. Um, and then that was on the north end, and then on the south end, it was 10 feet for about 25 feet. And then on Scotch Bonnet, there, there was no room. And of course, Greensboro, that was that section in the middle from WF8 to, to W10, and it was about 10 feet wide. There was about three spaces in there. Will and those that, areas have to be bulkheaded to? We've already bulkheaded. The town has put one bulkhead in the past at the end of Greensboro because that camel line comes up there and it tries to get into the road. So the bulkhead is there to protect the road and keep us from washing out right there. And, he, and you may want to bulkhead some of those other areas, but you, you can't bulkhead in the middle of the road. I mean, you know, I mean, it's going to be kind of tough to do. But in some of those areas on the end, on the far end, you may want to do some bulkheading on those, but because you don't, you save the land. It doesn't go anywhere. You know what I mean? And you can park in those areas. Definitely bulkhead the 800 block, that oh, yeah. portion on the 700 block. That's nothing but smart, smart business there. The bulkhead does. But that's 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 what we learned from the from the surveys. Was the high in the 800 block was the high water check that our, our keying tides where the, the water comes up or is that normal high water is is considered normal high water it's delineated by by those folks that know how to do it and they go out there it, it really doesn't have high tides don't dictate it extremely high tides don't dictate it extremely low tides it's considered what just normal high water Any more questions or comments? Motion? Anything you want to do? Just for clarity, or in my mind, bulkheading to save land on some of the marsh streets at the end, as you say, is one thing. To me, parking, pushing it all the way to the end of the marsh street doesn't really accomplish what we hoped to accomplish, which was to be able to give people parking places that are fairly close to walkways. Because if you're at the end of the marsh streets, you're already a significant distance away from any walkway. Um, so I, I'm, I myself have, have questions about, about the value of targeting parking that's at the extreme north end of any of the marsh streets, me personally. Mm -hmm. They kind of need to be closer up to Ocean Boulevard. So is there a kind of a how many spaces on the couple roads that there is the opportunity? How many spaces for full-size cars or golf carts we could get in that front half of the marsh street? Well, we, we, we looked at it for, for where we had lengths for parking cars. We didn't look at it for, like, golf carts and that kind of thing. We can go back and determine. But I gave you the widths and the lengths. Um, well, the width we were looking length, at anything with six feet. That's what we were looking for. That didn't really give us any numbers of, yeah. of, of cars. Can... Well, I can, I, we can go back and count to see how many cars we can, or golf carts we can get in the front numbers, in the front and the... Un unless, unless commissioners disagree with me that, that it should be everywhere, but again, I just don't see if we're at the extreme north end of the Marsh streets that that really helps us with getting people close to walkways. Well, I, 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 maybe I misunderstood what, I didn't really have any direction about what we were really trying to do here, but if you want to know what the numbers are, at where you can park and what you can park and where you can park it at, I can go back and we can redo this and get it back to the commissioners. I, I think that would be a good next step for us to understand okay. what can be done where. Um, <clears throat> because as you say, you've given us those lengths because mm -hmm. you have the surveys, but it doesn't really answer exactly what can we fit where. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, I can do that. We can, if, if I can get, we can get with Frank and, 
and our, our vendor over here for, for parking and make a determination of exactly what we can fix in there, fit in there, and what would best utilize mm -hmm. for work with our parking stuff. And then we can bring that back. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not hard to do. But do I understand that until the core issues the their um, determination, we really we we can't physically do anything other than plan what we're going to do. That's right. And we and we're going to and we'll be the same way with camera. We'll be we'll be saying this is what we want to do, and it'll be the same way with them. They'll have to give us because we can't go out there and delineate stuff just for ourselves. Right. The so Wilmington our, office will have to do it. So if our plan would become we want to bulkhead, we still need to get the permission to do that. That's that becomes our plan. Right. That's right. Okay. Tim, my only other question is with the, with after the delineation now, the the residents in that area that use the property across from their houses on the other side of the street will are will they be allowed to park there? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Need to clarify that you're talking about like High Point Street and Greensboro Street on the waterway side, or where are you talking about? Yes. Yeah, like on like on Greensboro Street or uh, if you're talking about, or yeah, if you're talking about on the waterway side. Uh, around the corners, we didn't delineate anything there. No, but like Greensboro Street going out, you said there were just a few spots that were. That were yeah, there's just a few spots there, but I, I, I think there's a difference between people parking there and the town giving permission for people to park there. I mean, we that that's a discussion. It, it, you know what I mean? I think we've had that numerous times. Right now, it's not yeah. permitted. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Because we said until we understood what those areas are, where it's off, it's going to be off limits. Right. And we'll have to make a decision where that's whether that is just going to remain off limits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think if if you could bring back the numbers and next time we will stand with you over the papers and look at it okay. when everybody's here. Okay. All right. Everybody good with that? Yes, sir. For me. Uh, <laughs> Five minute reset. Okay, we're back. Miss <clears throat> Pat, you got anything else you want to talk about? Do on this? Uh, no, because Tim is going to answer the questions that need to be answered, and it's clear. Our planning is only paper planning. We cannot do anything without jurisdiction first and then other permits. So our planning is thought and paper planning. All right. So are we in agreement we're going to move on? Yes. Okay. Doc, you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Smith, all right. Mr. Hewitt, number 16. Yes, sir. This is uh, in the year housekeeping budget <clears throat> amendment in the amount of $102,461 that's necessary to comply with the Physical Control Act for providing for and recognizing actual paid parking revenues received and the startup expenses incurred for on and off street parking in addition to the initial cost at 441 Ocean Boulevard West <coughs> to date. And that budget amendment is $102,461. Just as uh, for your information, to date, the actual total parking revenues that we have received is $166,749. And the expenses to date, $37,412. All right. <clears throat> Looking for a motion on this. I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 2215, amending Ordinance 2113 for <coughs> revenues and appropriation for the years 2021-22. Looking for a second. Second. Discussion? Anyone? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Mr. Hewitt, you have your favorable result. We want to number 18, town clerk, Ms. Spinnell. There are terms expiring on several town boards as of July. Um, I would recommend that the board hold interviews before our next board meeting at 445 on <coughs> July 19th. And if the board decides to go forward with that, I'll advertise for people to go ahead and turn in applications and schedule interviews. 
Fine. What's the pleasure? Okay. I think that yeah. we can do that. That's the, that's the date of our normal yes. Board of Commissioner meeting. Just 15 Heather. minutes before the meeting. Is that enough time? That's what we usually do. All right, mark your calendars 15 minutes early. <laughs> Mr. Hewitt, number 19. Yes, sir. Uh, this item is uh, regarding the staff bonus before the end of this fiscal year. At the May 20th commissioners meeting, the board provided guidance on staff compensation for the upcoming budget. That it, guidance included a proposed bonus in the amount of $750 to be issued before the end of the current fiscal year. And what um, I would need for that authorization is the board to approve the staff bonus in the amount of $750 per person to be issued this fiscal year to all current full-time employees in good standing with the town. No changes to any information we previously no, shared. Sir. No, sir. I'm looking for a motion. Uh, the, what, you said good uh, full-time employees in good standing with the town. And that, that means currently employed at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Do we need to make a motion to do that or just... So I'll make a motion that we move forward with the uh, $700, $750 bonus per person to be administered before the end of the year. A second. Second. All right, doctor made the second. Any more discussion? Um, back in November when we did the first bonus, we actually had a resolution that explained and gave a total of the amount of money um david you provided that back in november do we have are we going to have something similar to this that we no i was just going to operate off of the um the consensus of the board to move forward with authorizing me to do it this way it's the, the it's the people on the payroll and 750 dollars per person yeah it's all full-time employees I, yep. that that have satisfactory standing yeah okay so there's can, I, I guess after the fact can you just provide us with a total oh sure yeah okay if we don't have to approve a resolution but after the fact if you can provide us that total thank you sir and that's you uh, as we spoke today that was from the uh, vacancies we have the, we this past year the, the, the funds it, are available from within existing resources yes sir <laughs> Thank you, David. Ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous, Mr. Hewitt. <clears throat> Town Clerk panel number 20. At the May 20th board meeting, the board agreed to use a Social Security cost of living adjustment to update the salary ranges for this year. Um, we provided the adjusted salary ranges and the current ones so you guys could compare. The board also agreed that from a policy standpoint, staff would bring something back to the board. Attaches the recommended amendment to section two. Um, after researching an automatic annual adjustment as discussed, staff believes the salary ranges should only be automatically adjusted in the years that a COLA is approved for existing staff. There are issues that arise if the salary ranges are adjusted, but staff salaries are not. The proposed change would be consistent with what um, Many other local municipalities have in place, and it would not prevent the board from making any changes on their own at other times. So, um, if you'd like to move forward, we suggest the motion is approval of amendment to section two, administration and maintenance of the personnel policy, and of the adjusted salary ranges. All right, anybody want to make a motion? <clears throat> I move that we accept the attachment one proposed salary or proposed uh, salary ranges as as provided. Need a second. Second. <clears throat> second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Anyone? I have a question. Or 
is, is your intent just to improve the approve the chart or I, I think we should do it in two okay. in two in two steps because I do have some things I think there'll be discussion let's let's get the first part that's the most important out of the way you want to clarify your motion no my motion is to approve the salary ranges as expressed in attachment one okay any further discussion all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. It's unanimous. All right. You want to address the second part, Mr. Hewitt? Uh, just the, <clears throat> the words that go along with it, as the clerk ha has suggested, um, also have a, a, an amendment uh, that would require action by the board. Since since this came from some of our discussions, I, I I what I was anticipating was getting I would just say more of a policy on how we proceed annually on arriving at a dis, a proposal and decision whether or not the pay ranges need to move or not, not to amend the actual policy that we have, but to provide to provide a procedure that will be followed annually. Um, you know, the, the, the current policy makes the statement about um, each budget year, HR may make comparative studies of all factors, et cetera, et cetera recommend to the town manager um, ranges that appear to be pertinent. And, you know, I was, I think I was looking for, I, I know I was looking for something that would be um, HR and the town manager proposing in future years how we are going to do this and what the procedure will be to bring it to the board for approval, not to amend the existing policy. Oh, well, I mean, if, if that's what your desire is, because you guys have talked about actually automatically updating it. That's so what that's, I thought we were doing. That's what, that's what the direction was at the board meeting. But if that's not what you want to do, then what we have in place, there's no need to do that. It's already said that we would recommend to you if... Well, it says you may. Right. But, I mean, so what we do look at it each year, but in years, honestly, like when we don't get a COLA for your existing employees, we wouldn't recommend it for the salary ranges because you've seen the problems that we came across when we tried to do that in the past. So if you don't want it to be automatic, I would just recommend just leaving it as it is and we just use it as part of the budget process every year. I mean, I just, I think that would be, I don't think we need to change what we have if you don't want it to be automatic, which is absolutely fine. We just, we only brought it back because the board had said it at the last meeting. I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got to admit, I just don't like the automatic part. You know, that would be, that would leave the, any future, uh, this board or any future board from being able to, uh, Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I look at it as it's not just it. automatic, but there can be reasons, there can be reasons that would not even be what I would call cost of living adjustment, which to me is tied to inflation usually. If there was for some reason a major shift just in the market that suddenly everybody decided that salaries are going to go up and it's not tied to cost of living, that would be something that would be part of a decision by HR that I have to flag this. This needs to come to the board for consideration. Yeah. So I agree. I don't think any, I, don't, I, I automatic and cost of living aren't necessarily the key thing. It's it's that annually it's looked at and it's brought to the board during the budget process for a decision. Um, I mean, that was the kind of thing that I was, I was looking for. Well, I mean, I think that's covered in there. I don't think you need to make any change then. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Well, that was, again, that's the notes that I had here, you know, an HR policy. I mean, an evaluation of the market, which can change. <laughs> And, and make that where the the, the COLA would be correct inflation, uh, you know, at the rate it's going, it could go absolutely ballistic. Uh, but if, if 
again to make a recommendation by HR to the board, to the town manager, to bring to the board to let us to, to, at a budget meeting so we can discuss it. I think it would be a, a better way than the automatic. I yeah, then I believe it as it is. It was just that's how it came across to me at least at the last board meeting is that you wanted it to be automatic, which that's why I didn't agree with that either. It, that's why I kind of worded it kind of funny because it definitely shouldn't be automatic every year if existing staff is not going to get something. Okay. That just doesn't work. Let's try to get a consensus. Is the consensus of the board to leave it as is? <coughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can we move on? Yes. All right. Good deal. All right. Let's go to number 21, Ms. Pat. Okay, and um, this actually is the topic that we did get the one comment that came to the clerk that she sent to all of us. It had to do with, with the walkways over the dunes. Um, I did have a resident that asked if I would look at the 1100 block and how a walkway had been put. Um, there were concerns about the way the current ordinance reads on walkway, um, permissible walkways, shall we say, and the restrictions around walkways, and whether or not they were actually achieving, um, I'll just say, equal opportunity for houses that have to cross multiple dunes to get to the beach, because there is currently um, a stipulation of if it's 300 feet from the front dune to the beach, you can do one thing, but if it's less than that, you aren't allowed to do it. And I did check with, uh, with Tim about whether he felt that this could benefit from being re-examined by planning and zoning. It's not currently in the land use area, but it, it actually should be. So one of the things would be for planning and zoning to recommend that it be moved to the appropriate place in the ordinances. Um, but in addition, I think that the Planning and Zoning Board evaluation and possible suggestions for changes on the, on the walkway policy as written would be beneficial. Um, and it would be only fair for those people who are in the section of the island where it is a considerable distance to the beach but it's not 300 feet. 299. Well, and, and so um, if, if the board agrees, um, we just need a motion for P and Z to evaluate it and, as appropriate, propose some improvements to Ordinance 9403, um, and as well advise the board whether Chapter 9403 or portions of it should move to Chapter 157. Um, I've written here, I was, I was thinking give them until October to do it because looking at what some other communities are doing would probably be beneficial to coming to some decisions on what the best path forward is for our own ordinance. You want to make a motion or we'll just do a consensus and a directive to... I mean, Tim, do you have any disagreement with... I have no disagreement. I think it would be best to send it. this. This section needs to move to the land usage section. It's actually confusing to contractors and to homeowners because it's actually in a regulatory section. It also limits their ability to appeal those decisions because of where it's at. So by putting it over there in the land usage, it gives the opportunity for, uh, say, a handicapped person or something like that to to maybe engage it in a different way. Um, but yeah, at, from a planner standpoint, looking at this ordinance, it really should be in land usage. Well, Tim, I was able to go visit that location myself. And uh, it looks like, you know, with our uh, incentives to protect our sand dunes, you know, the, to, to, to go over the same two sand dunes every time you go back and forth to the beach would just create an avenue for water to come in. And I think doing, revisiting this and, and moving it and uh, getting a more reasonable solution would be a good idea. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into why we should or shouldn't do it, but I can tell you there's a history why they don't go out there. Yes, sir, you've discussed that with me and, before. And, and uh, 
that's why I think it would be better in the planning board so the history can be can be uh, looked at and the planning board can then take some good considerations. There may be some other options we want to look at. The extension, the exception, it works well at the west end. And one of the reasons was was they have a big, huge swash down there. And because, and because of that, they were all traveling in a common path. And so the exception was written and the lengths were determined based off of what it took to get across the swash. Uh, and unfortunately, those lengths taper off. Now, you also got to remember is, is that this exception doesn't apply even in the 1100 block if the frontal dune and the primary dune are the same. Camera primary dune are the same. Then you possibly can go out there or go further out. That's why some go out and some don't. This is limited by our frontal dune. Our frontal dune is where we stop. But if they happen to be identical to the camera dune and it happens to be the one farther out, even if it's in the 900 block, the walkway can go out there. It's based off of the dune that has the best potential to protect the structures. And, and so there's a lot, what I'm saying is, there's a lot in there, and that's why the planning board needs to look at it. And it's great that you're giving them plenty of time. Because I think this will be an issue that needs to be worked on. May I, may I add yeah. that if you're going to move the entire ordinance, please leave something in 94 so the police have the ability to enforce that $500 fine. Because if you move it completely, it becomes complaint driven. And we won't be able to deal with it. No, sir. Thank you, Frank. That, that wouldn't be a problem. I'm, I'm not suggesting that we move the part where people walk across the dunes. We're only suggesting moving that portion that has to deal with the land usage and structures. Thank you, Frank. Do you have a problem in October having that back? I believe that's what you're suggesting. I, I wanted to give them plenty of time. I, I hope we can get it back by October. <laughs> If you get it done earlier than that, you can okay. get back to us. Okay. All right. Is everybody happy with that directive? Yes. Okay. All right. Are we at public comments? Number 22. Anybody want to talk about anything you want to talk about? If you do, raise your hand and go to the podium, speak in the microphone, and tell us who you are. I'm Ashley Royal, 144 Sailfish Drive. Um, my intention of coming to this meeting was that I missed last meeting, and when I read the minutes, um, I felt I should give some input with regard to the inspections department. Um, I came out of retirement, <laughs> I'm still questioning that, <laughs> back in February, and um, I've got responsibilities now that directly relate to uh, the inspection department because I'm... Uh, I'm now charged with working with a construction company, and I have interfaced with the inspections department probably at least two or three times a week in one way or another, either by email or direct face-to-face. -face. And, and it's been an education for me because if you've never filled out a CAMA permit application or uh, even a building permit, that it, uh, many of which have many nuances that... Uh, it's hard for someone to just fill out one and then expect it to be approved. So I've interacted with Tim and his staff many, many times, and I'll have to say I didn't get I didn't get a permit done maybe as fast as I wanted to, but I quickly came to understand that it takes time in order to, as, as those who are charged with enforcing uh, rules that make sense to keep us safe, uh, I, I just have to say that, that they've supported, uh, I, I think they're, they're doing us a great job in protecting us and making sure we have code enforcement, which is what we all want. Um, I also came because uh, I looked at the, at the meeting packet and I just saw the colored surveys here and of course my next question was, well, where are the where are the marshes designated for parking? So I was glad to see the maps are here. Um, my personal opinion is I've, I've heard discussion about bulkheads or for the protection of land, which of course they are, and uh, I'm all in favor of that. But I would hope that I didn't hear anything that would indicate 
that we would construct a bulkhead so we could get more paid parking. Because to me, that's not environmentally sound and, it, and, it, it, and it's probably not uh, economically sound either. So I, I'm just, since I didn't have a chance to ask questions, I just wanted to make that comment. And lastly, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm real sensitive to having a bias for action. And sometimes the bias for action is if there's something's critically important, then it dictates that you take action quickly, but only after you've thought it out very well. The other side, in my opinion, for a bias for action is, my time up. Well, I'll just say, I don't see the a bias for action with, with all due respect for this proposal we've got to, ha to start peddling on the beach. I would beg you to say, rather than saying why not, I would first ask the question why. Thank you. Right. Who else wants to speak about anything on your mind? You want one? Twice? Don't forget me. Say what? Don't forget me. No, I got you coming. <clears throat> All right. Town manager's report. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be brief. Wanted to give a... Uh, observation on the status of our FEMA storm damage repair project which I refer to as a, the CRP2, the Central Reach Project 2. Uh, basically the operations have concluded. All of the beach construction activities are complete. What we're uh, transitioning to now and seeing is uh, the signs of equilibrium. The sand is starting to slide down the beach. We did make it through the full moon in June. Um, thankfully, we didn't have any wind and weather on top of the king tides. And uh, that berm, as constructed, performed well. Uh, on the finance side, and this is where we will transition our efforts to now, we're trying to finalize our special obligation bond and, and close out. As we head into year two of the outstanding special obligation bond the balance is right at 15.2 million dollars with all but the final uh, sweepings of cost being incurred where we will uh, what we are uh, experiencing now is our request for reimbursements um, and FEMA processing those reimbursements to us so that we can in turn pay uh, PNC back so we anticipate the final request uh, for the inspection on the project to occur sometime the end of July, uh, hoping for a final reimbursement uh, soon thereafter for the special obligation bond. Of course, all that's going to be subject to how long it takes FEMA to schedule our final inspection and approve the final payouts. Uh, concerning payouts, uh, been in contact with the county manager and uh, they will be reimbursing us $80,000 for the county's portion of the Lockwood Folly Inlet Crossing Navigation Project that we executed simultaneously with the Central Reach Project 2. Um, Seagull Street paving status, uh, Black top should be going down tomorrow anytime shortly thereafter. That road work has been prepped. Uh, status on the pier and block Q, the request for qualifications for engineering consulting services uh, were put on the streets and are due back by the end of this week. Food trucks uh, have had a couple of slow weeks. Uh, getting off the ground there with the number of customers that are coming to the pier. Camper spaces, those are up and running. We do have some reservations made. And the $180,000 CAMA grant uh, reimbursement that we got for the lot on the west side of the pier, uh, those administrative actions have all been finalized, submitted to the Division of Co Coastal Management, but we're probably not going to see those uh, funds received until after the 1st of July because the state doesn't cut any checks in the
the last six weeks of the fiscal year. And that's all I have tonight. All right. <clears throat> Any questions of Mr. Hewitt? Mr. Uh, Mayor's report have a a good series of concerts going so far this year. Thank you, Christy. Um, and we have the TAMS coming up Sunday night, which is always a favorite. And uh, have you got the weather under control Sunday night? Okay. <laughs> the uh, the people seem to be. Uh, really enjoying it as usual and we haven't had any incidents of any kind and I'd also like to say that uh, I haven't seen a single glass bottle of beer on the dance floor this year so far which is a record we got yeah Christie's the enforcer down there and uh, everything's going great I also uh, Lieutenant Dilworth could you share with us a minute since we've got fireworks season coming up would you share that with us just to remind us all. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I uh, just want to remind everybody that all fireworks except sparklers are prohibited on the island. Um, and, and to clarify, there are some fireworks that the state of North Carolina allows places to sell and you can possess legally here. Um, those are still prohibited on the island. So the ones you can buy across the bridge at the local businesses are still prohibited. Um, and certainly the ones that come out of South Carolina, the big mortars and stuff. Um, the thing about those in particular is it's not a ticket. It's a misdemeanor charge in the general statutes, which means if you come here from Iowa or Indiana and you get lucky enough to get one of those citations, you get to come back to see the judge. And there's no option. So, um, um, but and we we try hard to enforce it and we're really strict on it because if you've looked on Zillow lately or if you're involved in real estate, every fifty foot piece of property over here is worth over a million dollars. With without very with very few exceptions. It's it's about fire prevention and protecting everything that we have over here and you know, as as good of a fire department as we have we don't want them practicing on the island, right? Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant Dilworth. And we've been very fortunate over the years with no major catastrophes of any kind. And I know I continue to get calls about the fireworks on the pier, possibly, or, or where people can go. But I would, uh, I would encourage the town to look at fireworks possibilities or no fireworks possibilities but sometime in the near future turn our attention so that next year uh, we'll have uh, have our minds made up and our plans together either for or against well in advance of July the 4th uh, so we know what, what we're doing. Uh, another thing that's heavily on my mind is hurricane season. We are in hurricane season and as your emergency director I would uh, say to all that are listening, get your plan together and be prepared. Uh, the town of Holden Beach and the county of Brunswick will be prepared and we will be having our meetings behind closed doors as well as open meetings and information is readily available to anyone that is seeking uh, advice and publications that can help them plan for their uh, properties. So uh, we will be working uh, dead ahead and be prepared for uh, hurricane as well as other emergencies. I am um, talking about emergencies. I'm still strongly thinking about and encouraging the town about something we haven't talked about recently, and that is emergency access on the west end beyond the gate. Um, you know, it's a long it's a long ways from the 800 block to the Shalot Inlet, and um, we've got to do something uh, to figure out how to get the emergency vehicles uh, quicker access to the the 1200 1300 block. Uh, people go swimming, and things happen down there too. So, um, Mr. Hewitt, if you will, let's 
move that back on the burner and see if we can get some conversation and communication going with um, property owners down there. And I know we had some activity going uh, down with the private property owner and trying to work with the POA down there. But I haven't heard any communication about that recently, so uh, maybe we can get that started again. Otherwise, I think the island is looking great again. And uh, I, last weekend, uh, only two dogs whenever I rode down the beach strand, uh, one trip back and forth. There are only two dogs, one end of the beach to the other. Uh, people were nice and removed them as required. Uh, I would say to those that are listening, uh, there has been a change in uh, the way the uh, dogs with uh, special service dogs, uh, the rules and regulations may not be the way you remember them. So I would encourage anyone that has special service animals, dogs, whatever you think that your favorite critter is or one that you have to have, I would encourage you to read the current rules and regulations to be updated on that because the rules have changed. So be careful. And also, uh, our town ordinance says the dogs will be on a leash. That doesn't mean they can snap the leash to the collar and turn the dog loose and play frisbee with it on the beach. Uh, we expect you to have your leash in your dog, to your dog in your hand, and the dog be under control. So um, anyway, that's enough preaching, and I would just say thanks to everybody for listening in tonight. Town's in good shape, budget's in place, and summertime's here, ready or not. Booking reservations for the rentals, I understand, is strong, and we're going to have a good season. And with that, Mr. Rick, the floor is yours. Yes, sir. Well, I, again... I really want to thank all the folks that came out and attended our meeting this evening. It really is good to see people come out and voice their opinions. Uh, it's they, they, All their opinions are there. It's, it's taken to heart. And for them to take time out of their evening to come and spend time with us, it is, uh, it's, it's good to hear them and good to see that people want to know what's going on here at the town of Holden Beach. I also want to thank our, our staff. I mean, uh, Tim... Uh, Christy, Heather, they, they, David, they do, a, and all their subordinates do a great job of keeping this town running. We seem to be down on employees right now, and we need to uh, see if these guys can't uh, do the best to fill the open positions. I know that makes it hard on the, the rest of the staff. Uh, the police, again, uh, the, these guys do a great job. It's, it's good to know that it's I feel like this is one of the safest places on the planet. That's what makes it a, that's what makes it a, a true blessing to be able to live here. Uh, I did stop and talk to Adam today. I had found uh, somebody had lost a wallet on the street, and I stopped and gave it to him. And uh, you know, I, I, I asked Alan, Adam about you know the the seat belts and the child restraints. He says I got it. I gave out ten seat belt tickets and two child <laughs> restraint tickets this week. I said, or last week, I said, well, I don't need to say nothing else. So that, again, is, you know, and I get on my soapbox and talk about these low-speed vehicles. It's it's because of past experiences. I can I know what can happen. So it's, you know, I'm going to probably mention this forever. But that's good that you guys are at, you know, the people that see that they're getting tickets for it, they're going to tighten up. You know, it's like anything else. Uh, our paid parking group, guys, you... Uh, I appreciate your leniency on some of our guests. Uh, you know, when Alan spoke earlier before we got this in, in, implemented, we wanted to make sure that they were happy, friendly people and give them the benefit of the doubt. We, you know, we want to, uh, this is an important step for our, our town, but having a good group to look after us has uh, is, 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 is been a blessing. So thank, thank your staff for them uh, trying to, to be as helpful as possible, and, and you also, Jim. And back to Frank on the fireworks. I mean, guys, come on. I mean, you know, us homeowners, we put our heart and souls in these things, and for stupidity to take them away. Uh, you know, if you want to see the fireworks, 
walking on the beach about dark and you'll see them at the other islands uh, or go to an organized display. And again, as Alan alluded to, maybe at some point in time we can uh, have some something that can be funded by some of our merchants association or some of our organizations here on the island to, to have some type of organized, controlled uh, event. And maybe that'll be something that'll add some revenue to the, the pier when we get it open. But otherwise, uh, thank you, and uh, we're uh, working hard to keep holding beach, holding beach. Dr. Dyer? <clears throat> yes, I want to touch on something Alan said earlier. A lot of people think that our ordinance for dogs from 9 to 5 is to punish people and not let them take their best friend onto the beach. I want to remind everyone, if you're flip-flops, you can't walk on the sand in your flip-flops, your dog certainly cannot walk on paw, their paw pads. So if a lot of people forget, and you watch them walk across the sand, they're, they're tiptoeing because the flip-flops, the sand's getting in there, your dog's feet are burning. Um, white dogs, dogs without pigment will sunburn, um, and salt water does not hydrate your pet. It will dehydrate them. So the 9 to 5 ordinance is not to punish anyone. I live here. I have dogs. I don't take my dogs on the beach between 9 to 5. It's dangerous. So I just want to touch on that on my professional standpoint. Uh, I want to thank the first responders. I think they're doing a great job with the busy season coming in. Uh, the staff, I know everybody's having a fit for us to hurry up and get the pier up and running, but what the Public Works Department has done to the pier, I think it looks great. It's cleaned up. The, everything looks great. It's dressed up. We're getting there. We can. We have to walk before we run, but I really appreciate all the work that they put into it. It's nice to drive by there and see the changes in a positive way. And everybody hates change. Some of the changes are going through. I think they're positive. I think it's helping us to have a friendlier, friendlier beach and um, just everybody stay safe. Thank you, Doctor. For those that may be listening and not know, Doctor uh, Dyer is a licensed veterinarian here uh, in Brunswick County. Ms. Pat? I'd like to thank our outside speakers. Um, Y'all gave us some good information to listen to. I'd like to thank the police department and Tim uh, both for working with me this past month and continuing to be a fount of information. I want to answer, partially answer the comments that one person made about they were disappointed they're not hearing anything about the peer. It wasn't in these minutes yet because we had a special meeting at the end of May, but we did actually move forward on having an RFQ requested that the town manager reported has been put out so that we can have planning for the peer property, start that plan. So it's not that we're not doing anything, but we're doing it stepwise the way that we should do it. And there will be more information coming as we get somebody hired and an engineering firm that will put together the next steps that we have to make, both for the peer and what we're going to do for Block Q. So just bear with us. We're doing it, but we're going to do it slowly, and we're going to do it right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Madam Clerk, have we completed the agenda and everything is in order? Yes, sir. I would like to make a motion to adjourn, please. <laughs> Second. <laughs> we adjourn. <laughs>